show is for adults, by adults, using adult language, role-playing adult situations and possible controversial topics. No situations or topic reflects the views of the Dungeon Master or the players in real life. You have been warned. Hey, Zarius. Um, hello? Who's who's that? I'm that terribly creepy villain you've been working on. Oh. I had some thoughts about some terribly overpowered abilities that I could use against your players as they fight wave after wave mm. of my seemingly endless minion horde. <laughs> That sounds really fun, but I don't know where my notebook is right now for my dungeon notes. You fool! You should be using World Anvil. World Anvil? What? What's World Anvil? World Anvil has everything you need to start creating and building the really? world. You can upload maps, make character or villain profiles, timelines, update world lore, and much, much more. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to have to definitely sign up for... <laughs> Why are you laughing like that? Is either kind of spell slot for either kind of spells is like. Thank you. Yay! Hey! Hello! Hello! Episode 14 of Vow of Keep. Woo! Which, if you check out our YouTube channel, you can see, I think, a clever titles for all these episodes after the fact because do we, we never have know. a we link for that channel for our chat we can if you give me 90 <laughs> seconds to go get it because i didn't think that far ahead before i mentioned it all right ladies and gentlemen we at some point during probably character role play will have a random youtube link to to the about the keepers youtube channel in the chat because we plan ahead yes I was like, hey, let me mention the two cool episode titles that I make up, and then uh, I didn't actually have any of them. To... There we go. Yeah. But yeah. Awesome. Super duper on top of it all the time. Constantly. Um, but yeah, so here we are, episode 14. We, as always, like to make sure that we thank World Anvil, who we are proudly sponsored by. They have everything that you need to start creating and building your world. You can sign up for free and get started right away at worldanvil.com. You can also join their Discord at the links in chat, which should be that way. Um, and then, of course, we thank Roll20 for their generous support. They provide us with a pro account and core books so that I can give you something to look at other than our beautiful faces for four hours every week. Um, we've got that high lofty sub goal that we're inching towards as best we can and um so keep chipping away at that we got like a dice tower with a wormwood dice tower giveaway at the really high sub threshold dice and, tower and tray and tray um so th and, uh, it's a little ways away but we'll get there a little at a time which, which um, Star just dumped 10 subs yesterday on the channel so we only need like uh 65 two. more so if you want to Donate 65 subs for a giveaway. Now is the time to do it. <laughs> 65 subs and we'll hit them up. Yeah. Um, so we will be picking up somewhat where we left off with Czar and Shelly in Cleo's Bound Memory Bookstore. They had a rather enlightening evening, gathered a whole bunch of information, potentially made a new ally of sorts it's a little bit of a tenuous relationship at the moment but um we're gonna kind of bookend that a little bit and then they'll head back to the rest of the group wake up the next morning info dump everybody blah 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 etc and so forth and um we'll go from there so uh, what would you like to kind of how would you like to try to kind of wrap this up here with her well um for Zar's end, he'll finish taking up his notes, uh, detailed notes on the uh, cleric domain, and um, then kind of uh, turn toward Cleo and say, "So, um, what about a library card? 
they need to come back. And oh, since we're going to be ongoing with maintenance of, you know, everything that's going on, we're going to continue sending payments. It would make sense that, you know, we would be allowed to come in. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> library card. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> a, a library card for you two or for oh just you, us is you, fine you two just oh um the um the us's that were us yes because i i can't exactly have this i can't have my store suddenly becoming a keeper clubhouse if cool. i'm sure you can understand so don't rub his hand over his ring and transform back into uh Agamor. See, it's fine. Just agonal, just fine. And Ben over there, it'll be good. I can't even spell it. All right, all right. Um, Avador. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever works best for you. This will this will cover the two of you. You won't be eligible to sponsor anyone. So don't go getting any crazy ideas. Oh no, that's fine. You really wouldn't want the other ones in here anyway. One of them's particularly a savage when it comes to information in books and she she's rather rabid. Um, These are sounding all like druid quotes, but I know you're not talking about the actual druid, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, so sh she'll kind of work behind her desk a little bit and sort of stamps out a pair of library cards for your persona. Um, and yeah. Should should you find yourselves at any of my sister's shops. You'll need to know volume three. Volume three? So we ask for volume three? They'll ask you. That is what you'll need to tell them. Volume three. Got it. We really appreciate all of your help. We do, and we're definitely going to keep you updated as well. Goes, please, you please know. do. Um, okay. and, and please don't be so cavalier showing this to them. They, no. they, not, they may, not, may not be as understanding as I chose to be. You know, I'm just Still not exactly sure why we decided to tell you, but it just felt like the right thing. By the way, if you happen to head up uh, toward the north and the west, don't go on the mountain. There's demons up there. You seem to be running into an awful lot of demons. Well, you know, a pillar falls and things come out. Her, her name's Becky, by the way, and, and um, she's very nasty. So, Finn over here made friends with her. Hmm. I mean, I wasn't really gonna be her friend. Mm. The mountains crown a rest. But they're looking yeah. for something up there, and you might want to steer clear in case you go up there. I'm not sure why you would. It's really far <laughs> away from here. It's kind of silly thing to bring up in the middle of nowhere, but... <laughs> Everyone we meet, don't go up to that mountain! <laughs> I, I, I mean... Fair, Finn, but at the same time, we don't know if Cleo's a famous yeti hunter. I mean, she obviously prefers to be down here with her books. She's not going mountain climbing anytime soon. But what if there was a book in that monastery that she really wanted? Well, that's, that's what I have procurement experts such as yourselves for, don't I? Exactly. No, I, I suppose so. Anyway, better safe than sorry. I wouldn't want to see, you know, somebody that um, I don't want to see dead go end up dead. Mm -hmm. So, 
definitely no mountains, no soda. I'll uh, start where, making a list, I guess. Where are your sister shops, by the way? Uh, they're they're around. We we uh we don't like to hand out map maps or guidebooks or anything of that sort, but they're in a few places here and there, a couple of the capitals, a few of the smaller cities, but places that you would think our clientele might find themselves would be my suggestion. All Sounds right. Good. So, um, I think I'll finish up here, Mr. Unseen Servant. Thank you very much for turning the pages. You All get right. an, an invisible wave from the Unseen Servant. I wave back. <laughs> Assuming that I they're waving. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oops. Are you good, Shelly? Do, do you have everything you need about the pilgrimage uh, and the rituals? That's Finn right now. Oh, so, sorry, Finn. Finn. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm good. I think uh, I think this is this is great information. We're very appreciative. All right. Well, um, thank you again, Chloe. And don't forget to keep that book hidden. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, yes. And she kind of like buzzes you out through the gate and sends you on your way. Do be careful. <laughs> don't lose that card. I don't need it in falling into anyone else's hands. We'll not. We'll go it with my life. Put it in my bag of holding. Right. Um, well, let's head back, Finn. I doubt anybody's still awake, but yeah. If they are, um, I hope it's kindly so we can rub our nose in it. That was awesome. That was extremely awesome. I don't even know. I, I don't have the words. Did you see those books? I mean, I'm not a you know, a super learned man, but even I got excited when I saw those. I mean, I've seen some books and those were some freaking books. Those were definitely some books. And not only that. We know how to make clerics now. <laughs> oh, Can't tell point. people that. Well, they, they don't know what kind of clerics. Alright, well, let's just get back. Alright. So we'll head back to the end. So you, you stroll out into the alley, yelling with excitement at the fact that you had such a <laughs> successful night, drawing the attention of the night watch. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, you're gonna have to kill him. Quietly make your way back to the inn. The um, staff is mostly shut down for the night. There's just the one person behind the desk to for any sort of like late night check-ins and things of that sort. But everyone else has gone to bed. Um, you can settle in for the night and fill everybody in at breakfast, or you can shake everybody awake and be like, "Oh my god, oh my god, this was the best night ever." As you would happen to prefer, and uh, we'll just roll from. Um, let's let's wait till morning. What do you think, Shelley? Yeah, probably. Give Kimmy a good rest before we give her a cardiac. Yeah, we'll probably need to figure out where we can talk without people overhearing us anyway. So. Oh, um, I'll head over to the desk with the creepy people. Um, so, um. Do you have, like, a private conference area that we could use in the morning? A private conference area? Not really, no. We're a little bit of a smaller Eliasin. Hmm. Some of the bigger ones have those kinds of conference oh, facilities. I thought, I, I thought they were all the same. Did you pay a lower franchise fee or something? Well, obviously a, a you know, 40, 50 room in <laughs> isn't needed in a town this size. So there's some variability available to people when they decide to invest. But um, I would recommend suing by the archive. They have some private studies and things of that sort that you would be able to utilize um, if you wanted to have a little quiet chat of some sort. Brilliant idea. And I'll tip them the silver. All right. Well, uh, good night, Ben. Night. Up to bed. 
they're going to charge you double for your room because there's two of you in each room now. <sighs> See, I told you this place is a place of fucking evil. <laughs> you didn't bother to drop <laughs> these guys is... before you came back, so they're like, oh, okay, those rooms are double occupancy, okay. Just in case somebody followed I us see. from, you know. All right. So, you go to bed, you wake up the next morning, everyone comes down to breakfast, has a nice little meal, kind of gives a stretch, how'd it go, how'd you do, that kind of stuff. Um, I think we should meet at the archives and uh, found out that they uh, have their own kind of private conference areas and reading rooms. I'm sure Princess over here could secure us one of those. You know, the great research of Bella Fiore and all. And uh, we could go over things then. Fine. Figure out our next moves. <clears throat> okay. Oh, we're think? finally planning things ahead. <laughs> yeah, enjoy breakfast, everyone. Gets up for the day, ready to go, stroll across town to the archive, stroll up to the front desk. Oh, there. before going into the archive, <clears throat> I go back into my scholarly disguise. Oh, lordy. <laughs> because of course you do. Um, of course. Of course you do. And <laughs> they are more than happy to let you use one of the... Um, private research reading rooms and normally um, like research assist people doing like dissertations and PhD students things like that they'll take a whole stack of books in there and just lock themselves away for the day to quietly read and do their research and studies and things like that so um, there it's a quiet room sound doesn't really get in and out too easily you'd have to really be either loud or attempting to eavesdrop to Kind of get anywhere, so it's it's a relatively private place to have a conversation. All right. They direct you down a hallway into a room. It's nice, all oak furniture, big table that you could spread out a bunch of books on, and sort of like, you know, get them open to the pages you wanted them to be on, and keep passing back and forth. That kind of a thing. It's a big workspace. You could easily sit um, like eight to ten people around the rectangular table. There's a bunch of um, like book return carts that you can put stuff on when you're done with it and all that fun stuff. Um, and yeah, there you go. Well, uh, Shelly? Yeah. Have at it. So, we found the coolest books ever. And also, and I think we should go. The weeping well. Uh, yeah, yeah, we found the uh, best collection of books I've ever seen in my life, to be quite honest. And um, yeah, as Shelley said, uh, we now know where the weeping well is. We know where um, actually, oh, four of four of them is. We know the rituals for each spot, and we also know the ritual for the last stop, the fifth spot. But don't know what's there, but we know the ritual for it. Oh, and I can make a cleric. I mean, that gives you a death glare. <laughs> oh, oh, you can't, we got you can't just too. make a cleric, but right, right, right. Well, we know how to make a cleric, or to get someone to make themselves a cleric now. Um, and we got these, and I pull out the uh, the little library <laughs> card, and I show it to uh, Kinley, and kind of go. Aww. Like, you know, heavenly Bizarre noises. Not <laughs> it's, it's got their their aliases names on there and these little like etchings that are copies of what they look like. They're like little they're almost like photos but more like hands magically hand sketched. You are a cool and unfeeling being. Well you should probably work on your barter skills. What? 
she's saying that to Kinley. Because the last few times she's heard about Kinley going somewhere to get oh. something, it hasn't turned nicely. <laughs> Maybe you should work on those biter skills and perhaps you'll get into these kind of places. So. Anyway, so I would actually really be interested in actually recreating the pilgrimage in some way, but also since we're already here and we're kind of close to it, I think the Weeping Well would be our next stop. Yeah, I mean, it's on the way, so it makes sense. Maybe Did we can figure want... out if there's already bad guys there, and if not, we need to talk about what we're going to do if there aren't. I think we should send a druid to sit up there as a crow or a raven or something and just kind of lurk about the trees on guard and if they see somebody like, you know, trying to dig up the area or get in, they can Would they do that though? I mean, it's not really their thing Well, I mean we're kind of in control of the druidic alliance, all we gotta do is send them word, so but either do it or we could just, you know, show up and um, I could convince them Crack my knuckles. With your cleric <laughs> making skills, I assume. Yes, exactly. That's the non lethal skill, I do hope. Oh, oh yeah, uh, definitely nobody would die. No fingers getting oh, no, messed no, up. No, no, no fingers, no toes. I keep my word. Oh, we've added, we've added toes now. Great. Well, I mean, they're basically like little fingers, but on your feet, so. I... sure. I mean, am I right, Finnegan? Have you ever turned into a monkey? Did you, like, use your toes as fingers? I mean, I know about monkeys. I personally have not turned myself into a monkey, but yes. Oh, and they well, also have pretty hind solid tails. Yeah, see? So, you know, I won't break any tails either, so there you go. No appendages that, you know, like that. No, won't do it. I'm sure I'll the be... tieflings will be happy if we cross any. Yeah, tieflings <laughs> kind of creep me out a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Oh, come on, not all of them are that bad. They're naturally evil. They're pretty bad. Are they naturally evil, though? I don't know, I just think they look kind of creepy with, you know, the horns and all, and some of them are, like, pink or purple, and... I, I don't just... think any playable races are naturally evil. Shh, shh. Lucy, Lucy doesn't know this. I'm pretty sure don't be a are bigot. not naturally evil. <laughs> Sorry, that's... Hmm. Are you really judging people on what how they look like? Well, no, I'm just saying, you know, if somebody comes up to me and, you know, they, they look like the color of blood, and they've got horns coming out of their head and these large fangs. I, I'm not going to instantly think that, you know, they're nice. Have you seen a tiefling? Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have. You just described a demon, not a tiefling. Well, some tieflings look like demons. Uh, I mean, Becky was nice. I mean, to who? I, I I nearly died from Becky. <laughs> Zara starts looking around the room. Who said Becky's noise? <laughs> looks, looks over to Shell or to Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't like to judge people before they've proven themselves. So. Well, you know, I don't either. I'm the last person to you know judge somebody on you know, their life circumstances and everything like that, but, you know, I I'm not going to lie, if I see something that looks like a demon and it's coming at me with its mouth open and I can't tell it's just smiling at me, I'm going to think it's trying to eat me or kill me. I'm pretty sure tieflings it's... just have teeth like us, though. Well, They're just different colors most of the time. Maybe, I don't know. Are you a dentist? Tiefling can have fangs. They can have, there's a whole variety of different traits that a tiefling are you, can are you, have. Are you a tiefling dentist, Shelly? Would you know about their teeth? I mean, <laughs> my per 
my person's a tiefling, so I kind of know. Hey, we're not I'm talking out of game here. This is all in-game conversation. Kidney, do you want me to go with you? Maybe I need to use my that, library. That card. was in-game conversation. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Well, uh, I'll be right here if you do. <laughs> God. So, can, everyone's talking about themselves, joking, plotting, scheming, as per usual. Kinley excuses herself to use the restroom, finds one just down the hall, and... Aren't they supposed to go in pairs, at least, or something? <laughs> You can't quite make out what's being said, but it sounds very loud and very angry. It's very muffled, and it's a. Imagine the father in the, the furnace and the Christmas story. Um, it's yeah. So it's 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 very very muffled. You can't make out specific words and things, but the tone is very very angry, and it's. Maybe, possibly, Kinley? You're, like, whoever it is, they're not very happy at the moment. Oh, so Kinley went to have a fit in another room? Yeah. <laughs> Who is making smiles. such noise? Meanwhile, Shelly's <laughs> just, like, talking about how their person back at home is a tiefling, and so they do know that tieflings don't have fangs, because... That'd so, be silly. so you're trying to assume that one tiefling is the same as all tieflings, huh? They all look the same, is that uh, what you're saying? I mean, from what I understood is that when someone's born as a tiefling, that they, they can show different traits of, you know, being a tiefling. Like, some tieflings may just have, like, a patch of scales on their neck or something, but... Might not I mean, even sure, have but right tieflings aren't naturally bad people, is what I'm saying. Oh, no, I don't think that tieflings are, I'm just saying... We're talking I, about teeth! Exactly. I'm just saying that if a really demonic-looking tiefling came at me, and I couldn't tell right away that it was just a tiefling, I'd probably whop it in its head. Even if it was a child? Even if it was. Especially oh, no. if it was a child. Make it even learn I, early. Even I don't hit babies. Well, good. unless it was a goblin baby, I'd probably punt it, you know, a good 20-30 yards. <laughs> to be fair, that is a good distance. I've, se I've seen it. I've got a good foot. So where did Kinley go? Oh, uh, oh. ladies room. Also, on the other side of the door, I hear her just fine. She's <laughs> she's just constipated, I assume. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's fine. I just kind of <clears throat> grin. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Finnegan knows exactly why Kinley's mad. <laughs> The books weren't my cup of tea anyways. So do we want to stop by the special ink tattooing shop I saw on the way to that weeping well? Or... I mean, sure. if, I'm if not can... sure if you and Zar want to check it out. If it can it... make me do things like Zar can, I want to get giant like that. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh well, no, if you want to do things like I do, you have first have to learn the ancient archaic language of <laughs> runic celestial. Oh, so what you're saying is... Just have Shelly put tattoos on me? Well, um, I had to tell Shelly what tattoo to put on. Which, by the way, I learned my tattooing content my tiefling friend, so. So all tieflings right. can tattoo, too? Okay. No, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying at all. No, she's saying all tieflings get tattoos. Oh! Also not what I'm saying. <laughs> Could you both perhaps just take a walk in the library and go figure this out about people? This whole campaign is just all just shooting jabs at each other this entire time. Well, 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 Zara would be doing this kind of like jesting with Shelly at this point. He's kind of grinning and just like, you know, kind of showing that he's just being playful. He's not like trying to be mean about it. It's a, it's a miracle you haven't lost more pillars already at this point. As far, <laughs> exactly. as, I, as, far as I'm concerned, I'm just sitting here like, these guys are a train wreck. I'm perfectly fine with going by the tattoo shop, though. I doubt any of them could do the fine work that Shelly did. Thanks. Maybe she could grab some more. They could grab some more tricks from them. We maybe, can you all could sell, maybe you could sell them 
your knowledge and you can make a profit off of it. Oh, that's true. Um, Perhaps. Like that. Maybe you could give them some tips, but um, I, I know when they did my tattoo, I mean, it didn't hurt at all. I mean, it was just like, you know, somebody just drawing on your skin. Do I need an insight check on that? I mean, that's because I was healing you at the same time, but... I will totally roll a deception to try and beat your insight. I'm just saying. <laughs> do I have a reason to believe you lie if it hurt or not? I think I do. <laughs> Meh. So Lucy I'm, would I, I, I definitely, I'm definitely curious to become a, gi a giant uh, druid, so I'm definitely checking it out. <laughs> oh, that's an eight, Rip. All right, you're telling the truth. <laughs> Obviously, why would he lie? He's not a liar. <laughs> not about important things. Keeping your pride is important. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Is there uh, any other plotting, scheming you wish to do in the privacy of your reading room before you head out onto the streets? <laughs> First of all, we don't plot or scheme. We're upholding citizens of the keepers. Right. I I would probably want to rescan the uh, information about the weeping well and just kind of summarize it for everybody so that we all kind of are on the same uh, page when it comes to like what we're going to be looking for when we get closer and where to actually find it. Yeah, and what we're doing when we get there. What is the uh, kind of ritual that we do at the weeping well? Yeah. Also, do we have to go under the weeping well like we went underneath the tree? Is that a, is that a, is that a thing? <laughs> Just got to go under everything. Um so you re review the information that you have. You know that the weeping well is located in Vinewood. There's a large lake and in the center of the lake is the weeping well it feeds most of the like rivers estuary tributary this it's basically like the watershed for the valley of inspiration um starts at the weeping well it's the primary water source for this whole area um you're based on the description it seems a, a little strange but you're confident that when you see it you'll know it for sure um, but it just, you're reading it and you're reading it again. You're like, that's gotta be like a typo, right? Like it's not that tall. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but when you get to Vinewood, you'll see it clear as day and be like, oh, hey, there it is. Um, as for the ritual involved, the, um, there was, is, was a what? temple for that particular um, holy site on the edge of the lake. And there were some standard kind of like prayers and things that would be recited and you would traditionally float a lantern out onto the lake as um, kind of like firming your okay. loyalty or faith or however you want to phrase that. So I need to stop by the package store again and buy some uh, waterproof packaging to make little lanterns to put out on the lake after we're done with the whole ritual thing. I mean, they probably don't have to be waterproof. It's just a matter of... Because, I mean, if everybody does this kind of thing, then it's probably accessible to commoners and stuff. So just paper. I mean, they make paper lanterns that go out on the water, right? Like, that's mm. just a thing that people do. Um, I don't know. I've I've seen the sky lanterns before and the, you know, the river lanterns before, but um, I've never made one myself. I mean, usually I saw like families and stuff doing that, and I've never really had a family, so, you know, not really been my thing. I mean, I grew up on the water. Is that something that Shelley knows? It would be something that you're familiar with. There's there's other kinds of rituals and traditions that do that same sort of um, paper lantern kind of have that paper lantern kind of aspect to them either in terms of like lifting lanterns or floating them out onto a body of water um, there's the whole 
it's a little bit different, but there's that like Viking funeral idea picture of somebody like floating out and then getting set on fire. It's a little different, but there's at least enough that you're like, yeah, I, I know that kind of thing. And they're readily, uh, they, while not practiced in this way anymore, it would still be something that you could readily get your hands on through those other remaining traditions. Okay. Cool. So, are we ready to go then? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll go find Kinley. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. Because she. <laughs> so, I, I will meet you all outside after I procure her. And I'll make my way out of the room. <laughs> Okay, so somebody's got to tell him about that voice. Yeah, you hang, you hang I'll right try. out the door, and kind of follow the, the, raw <laughs> seething anger that's sort of leaking out into the hallway, and you eventually find, <laughs> the lavatory, and kind of, yep, pretty I'll, sure she's in this one. I'll kind of gently knock on the door. The, the wooden door that's probably like cracked in it. <laughs> 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 Damn. Wow. I'm really angry. Um Yeah, so that's gonna cost a lot of repair. <laughs> so I'll 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 knock on the door. <laughs> it's me. Can I come in? No, I can't do that. So I'm just going to come in, and I'll. <laughs> the second time, Zar has been said to go away. <laughs> in what three days? So, so I will go into the bathroom. <laughs> well, I mean, Zar really wouldn't be interested in anything anyway if she wasn't. So. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, are you okay? <laughs> oh, what? What's wrong? You get your hands on it. Hey, 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 hey! I know, you know that I don't wash my hands a whole lot, but you know, I, I try to. Especially after I go to the bathroom and whatnot. But also, my hands are really good getting, you know, a hold of things that other people can't. So you really be, shouldn't be that surprised. Well, it, it may, eventually. But, you know, for now, um, just know that we got access to it. So, you know, if we need to go look something up for you, we can. Until, you know, we can possibly get you in there. And as I've said, I'm kind of like looking under the stalls to make sure there's like nobody else in there. There's some terrified old lady, like, <laughs> got her feet picked up, and she's just, like, sitting there shaking on the chamber pot. <laughs> so, if anyone's still in there, they all probably ran off or scared to death. Yeah, no, you do, you do a quick lean over and look, and you don't see any feet. You know, don't... Don't get upset just because, you know, you didn't get it today don't mean you won't tomorrow. And quite frankly, I find that insulting, me of all people. I mean, I know I'm not as smart as you, Kinley, but that, you know, I'm, I'm not stupid. I understand. But, you know, we're all dealing with some things. 
saying, you know what I'm dealing with? I, I just told you the other night. You know, you don't see me going off and uh, destroying poor dolls and ancient archives and, you know. I know that. I don't feel sorry for any doors that get in your way, that's for sure. I think we're about ready to go. Are you ready? Alright, well, hold on. Hold still. He's gonna, like, take his fingers and kind of, like, fix her hair a little bit. That's probably all must from her, like, raging about the bathroom. That, that. I don't. <laughs> right. No. There you go. Now you look like the grand researcher Bella Foyer. Let's go. Alright, so hold. Exit the bathroom and take Kinley with me to meet the others. The person in the next stall now has heard three voices. <laughs> <laughs> in the same stall. Just want to let you all know that. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> Juicy. Better <laughs> than the love novel they were reading. Yeah, they're like, going to think they were freaked out. <laughs> they're they're, they're going to think the famed researcher Bella Fiore has got like multiple personalities. <laughs> <laughs> this just in Bella Fore is a lunatic. Yeah, you get your uh, library card revoked because they have questions about the uh, reliability of your research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's just a setback for the Bella Fores. They'll just yeah. eventually own this archive. <laughs> So you head out, make your way. You're going to head over to Animus to swing by that tattoo shop, or are you going to skip that? I have, oh, some question. I have some definite questions for them. Yeah, I'm fine with them stopping by the tattoo shop if they want to. Um, okay. I, I would buy a little bit of uh, um, paper, though, before we go to make the paper lanterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not too hard to find. There's plenty of shops that deal in paper, paper of... High quality. Yeah, but, yeah, because we're in a scribe town, so uh, yeah, I'm sure there's so paper on every. It's readily, readily gettable. Um, that's not too bad. So um, oddly enough, Lucy will also purchase a bit of paper and ink. Oh, and little variety of candles, because you gotta put candles in the lanterns, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did uh, we we said that there weren't really any scrolls shops here, right? Um, no, there were like shops. Magic scrolls? There were shops to get the raw materials to make spell scrolls, but not spell scrolls themselves. Okay. You could start your own shop here of selling spell scrolls. There you go. Get after it, Shelly. I mean, it's an option. It's a see a need, fill a need, right? You have no competition whatsoever. <laughs> For now. I think it did. So you make your way across the bridge into Animus. Lucy leads the way back to... Uh, okay. So you... Um, Lucy leads the way out to the shop that she remembered passing by. You stroll into the store, ding -a ling on the bell over top of the door as you walk in. You can see there's um, a couple of dwarves and what looks to be a human kind of maybe possibly like an apprentice type, doing a lot of running around the store, sweeping up and resupplying drawers and all that kind of help helper type stuff. Um, they're actively with clients, but you give them a little bit and they'll free up to be able to talk to you, but you can at least chat up the assistant in the meantime. Hi. 
ah, what, what can we do for you? What can we do for you? Hey, so like, I don't know if you can tell just by looking at me, but I kind of like tattoos. And I have a buddy here who's kind of interested in maybe getting one. Uh, but maybe not the kind that I give. <laughs> so, you... Uh... I mean, that's that's not that uncommon. We all have different art styles and things that we specialize yeah, in. Yeah. And, and so, it, yeah, that, what, what kind of tattoo are you looking for? Well, I mean, another friend of ours here, this this burly man here, uh, he he can he can make himself bigger. Can you can you do that? Uh bigger, like increase mass, larger, weighs more, hits harder. Urgh, you know, hulking, hulking out, urgh, had his protein for the day. Ah, uh, magical tattoos. Yeah, are you strictly decor? De decorative. Sorry, my words are getting away from me. De decorative. Decorative. Or decorative. are they decorative? There we go. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, you got it. Uh, So are they like that? Like just to make you look cool? Or do they actually like do things? Because I've, I've seen and done some tattoos that are actually like functional. Mm -hmm. Like watch this. Ooh, and I'll make my tattoos glow and do a detect magic. Um, so you pop Detect Magic and you can see that there is quite a bit of it scattered about the shop. Um, uh -huh. There's a couple yeah. of drawers that, while closed, you can see an aura kind of like leaking out of the seams of the drawers where you would assume that they keep the supplies for the magical tattoos. Um, uh -huh. The assistant lets you know, like, I, I'm just an apprentice. I can only do the normal kind. I'm getting really good, though. So, like, I could totally, totally take care of you if that's something that you need right now. Um, magical stuff is still all them right now. I'm, I'm not up to that level yet. But I'm going to get there, and they're going to be so good. Like, oh, I'm going to have a signature style, and it's going to be the best. Dude, Wait. I totally believe in you, and I want to see some of your work when, you're, when you got a chance. But Finnegan's the real star here, so go ahead and talk to him, and then I'll get back to you. Wait, are you telling me there's tattoos that don't do stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's like a whole art form. People, like... Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've only encountered with these two two, two dudes that have tattoos, and they, there's both glow and do stuff, so that's all I do. Tattoos. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, that that's become a more popular thing in recent times. Uh, once we learned how to um, saturate the ink with magic, uh, it, it took a little while for people to learn how to do that reliably, but they're starting to get it kind of nailed down. It's still a little sketchy, in my opinion. It's a bit like um, the glow-in-the-darky kind of tattoos. Every once in a while, you get one of those allergic reactions. And, um, but, yeah, no, Suck. it's been an art form for, like, a long time. Oh. Yeah. What what kind of style do you have, though? You said you're uh, gonna be up and famous. I mean, who says they might not want something like I did? I I got a tattoo from them before they were famous. Kind of thing, you know, maybe who knows? What what style you got? Well, I I'm still working on nailing down my personal style right now. I'm still uh, kind of learning some of the traditionals and um, you know the the a few of the other kingdoms in the empire have a signature style that I'm, I'm learning how to, to copy right now as an apprentice, but um, I have my little uh, sketchbook over here, and it pulls out a sketchbook, he starts flipping through, and it's very kind of abstract interpretations of traditional animals and tradition. like, it's a ship, but it looks nothing like a sailing ship, and you're like, yeah, no, this is totally like my nautical stuff, and you're kind of like, um, sure? <laughs> can totally see that yeah like they're way out yeah. in this kind of like abstract -y territory where and everyone's kind of like yeah kid sure keep work keep working at it you'll get there someday mm, okay like it it if you know anything about tattoos it would be making like new school look like hard traditional in terms Ugh. of photorealism that's how like abstract and out on the edge this kid Ew. is with their sketching oh god dude. <laughs> I'm not taking you are going to be you are going to be somebody's absolute favorite ta tattoo artist and that's all you really need is to have like two or three people who just really love what you do 
And if you're two or three people's favorite thing, then that's all you really need in life. So you keep I know, doing right? It. I mean, it, 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 like, I'm working on it. I, I know it's still work in progress, but I really think I'm on to something with this. It's, it's a style that nobody else is really doing right now. And uh, I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it's probably not going to be like uh, the instant tattoos anytime soon, right? We're not going to be having it on the shop, but someday maybe it might catch on that much. You don't know. Did weirder things have happened, right? And at, at that, you hear one of the, the dwarfs kind of snicker a bit at the idea of the kids art becoming like flash <laughs> on the wall someday. It is like, yeah, sure kid. Um, but yeah, so like, oh, if you're looking, if you're looking for magical stuff, like, is it, you need like heavy duty magic. You need like light magic. You said you wanted to be big. Uh, we have like illusion tattoos that could make you look kind of big or bigger. No, no I don't but... like, I don't like none of that fake stuff. I want the real stuff. Oh, what you, what you got? That's real. Look, what you got? That's real. Real stuff is a tall order. Uh, uh. I I don't really have <laughs> don't really have any kind of magic tattoos that make people bigger. Like we can do like yeah, like we got illusion tattoos. We got tattoos that like reinforce you, like you're wearing armor, but you're not wearing armor because it's tattoos got magic armor in it, and it looks it it's like liquid metal looking. It's really sharp. Like that stuff's really really cool in hmm. my opinion. You can get all kinds of elaborate patterns. I think it's looks like metal but it's not metal you strike me as the non-metal kind of a guy does it feel metal but not metal or is it just look metal no it just looks metal it's like super super shiny mm. liquid metal kind of looking ink it's a real cool shimmer effect um but it's not actually metal it's real cool super metal. lightweight yeah Wait. yeah uh okay, then, okay. Uh huh. you know there's cool, cool, some um like magical resistance things if you're the you know a lot of like bakers come in and get fire resistance because they're always burning themselves in the kitchen and stuff like that and oh, oh, oh the back just pause right there you say elemental resistance yeah yeah we we do some of that um uh, not so much here a few times people come in from other other towns um because they specialize in we have culinary arts are an art so you know there's a there's a cooking school in the kingdom that's real big and they all come in and they get their big flame tattoos and their spatulas and all that i don't know what cooking at, stuff at, at the mention of this stuff you're gonna see finnegan eyes just like sh just shoot just super wide and his hands are on the table and you're just gonna see like small little like frost coming from his fingertips on top of the table really you do that stuff here we can, yeah. I mean, it's it ain't cheap though. Like it's it's generally uh, pretty pretty up there because it's uh where to go? Sorry, I'm trying to reference the um you know it's like full sleeve, both arms and a chest kind of piece to get that kind of magic into you at one time. So like it's a oh, it's a big it's, like, it's a big it's commitment. Like you gotta, it's like all day kind of thing, isn't it? Ooh. Oh yeah, you gotta really know what you want too, because you get like one shot at that. It just you, you know, if you uh, decide you want, uh, it can be. It's it's you. Most people do okay. It's it's more of a like an endurance thing. You gotta like zone out, <sighs> just let it happen. You know. I've had I've had those issues in the past. Sometimes I can do it. Sometimes I can't. You know. Yeah. Takes a lot of training. It does. Mm -hmm. How many how how many how many slaves do I need to sell you for it? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I mean, how 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 many bars of gold do you need? Uh for something like this, you're talking like north of five thousand gold kind of territory. Like this is top of the line magical inks, my friend, like we only deal in the finest stuff, no impurities, no risks of cross contamination, no nothing, just clean work top to bottom. You know, I got a thousand gold and I have four compatriots that are each worth a thousand gold. What if I just let you have them? Excuse me, what? We don't generally trade in people? Dang it. That's well, a good answer. That's. <sighs> 
Well, the, the, the Empire has a few, <laughs> few kinds of currency, and uh, people is not one of them as of the last time I checked, which was just now. Uh, I feel like we need to have a talk. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, you guys, you guys heard that, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, I apologize for wasting your time. Uh, I'll definitely be sure to keep my ear to the ground when your name starts catching like wildfire over your tattoos. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, like if you want to lock in an appointment, we can take like a deposit. But if you don't show up to the appointment with the rest of the money, we keep the deposit, and it's like you forfeit it, kind of a thing. Yeah, um, I honestly don't know if I'm gonna survive more than you know three weeks, so I can't, I can't really guarantee you I'll make my appointment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do, do you, it. We also do like a sketch fee if you want them to draw up what you want it to look like. Oh, don't worry. They... I already know what I want. Okay. I mean, they can start oh, working yeah. on that for you. It's, it's, it would just be uh, like a couple hundred gold to get them just to kind of cover their time to draw it up for you. They can have that ready for whenever you hopefully live long enough to come back. Uh, kind of like side-eyeing Shelly a bit. Like, is this dude for real? You think he's going to die in three weeks? Um, I said could. What's your name, by the way? Just so that, you know, we can be like, check up on you and your art. See how you're doing. Fred, yeah, yeah, my name's Fred. <laughs> I mean, you know, it technically it's like Frederick, but who goes by Frederick, right? So it's just Fred. I mean, Frederick <laughs> seems like a better name to become famous by, though. I mean, my dad Could is be. Frederick. Like, you're just gonna get me confused <laughs> with him all the time. That seems kind of lame. I don't want to be confused with my dad. That's. Is your dad a famous <laughs> tattooist? No, but his name's Frederick. Well, I mean, how many tattooists do you know the name Frederick? Uh, how many tattooists do you know? I know yeah. none. So his name Frederick. I mean, you know one. Out. Yeah, like, I, well, two, right? You know her, him, me, them, them. us. Them. Again, that makes a total of three tattooists, and guess what? None of them are named Frederick, apparently, because your name's Fred. Yeah. See how rare Frederick is. Anyway, I'll be back to check up on you and your art, because I think you could be going places. But I think that we're not really in the uh, capacity for purchasing at this moment, and me and Finnegan here might need to have a little talk about appropriate conversation with people. So thank you <laughs> for your time. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, oh, we'll, we'll be here. We're always happy to try to pencil people in when we can <laughs> yeah all right you guys have anything else before we go mm -mm. okay so i'm gonna head out bye fred lucy is gonna push uh finnegan out of the parlor what is wrong with you guys heard we were right behind you oh. the whole time sorry i got distracted when he mentioned elemental resistance and absorption I, is that gonna have to be a worry if something shiny comes across you're gonna want to sell one of us in i mean does it sparkle like a snowflake Lucy just kind of glances at Shelly at this point, like, is this guy for real? <laughs> Shelly just casts a frostbite, like, at Finnegan's feet. Be like, that shines pretty sparkly, right? <laughs> I'm casting Frigid Grasp. Make a DC save of 16. <laughs> I mean, I didn't cast it at you. Okay. Just, like, at the ground in front of you, like. Then then if you didn't shoot it at me and just showed that you could shoot frost, uh, as I walk away, I'm going to leave a trail of frozen footsteps. I'm going to turn to Lucy and be like, why, why are all the people we're traveling with, like, so like that? Melodramatic. <laughs> well, at least Zar can be talked to. 
um, Finnegan. We got breaking fingers. We got people trying to sell people into slavery. We got whatever is going on in the bathroom. I think that was a temper tantrum. I believe that was a temper tantrum. Are we the only chill people in this group? Like, oh, you think I'm chill? Thank you. (laughs) I mean, I can help you out with chill. Well, anyway, we should probably keep moving and you know keep an eye on the others because they're gonna get themselves in trouble. I'm pretty sure Zar can get himself out of trouble quite easily. Finnegan? Yeah, but we don't want to have bodies to deal with after. That is also true. I mean, That's such a mess. And also, those bodies are like people. So, so far, sure I have not seen Zar drop a single body. So far. I mean, he probably killed some of those people on the bridge. On the nope. Bridge. They yeah. they could have definitely be sleeping. We didn't check. We didn't check their pulse. You're just assuming at this point. Sure. Yeah, that makes probably sense. just knocked out. You know. Yeah. Now, what Silverheart did, he that would be considered murder. Possibly even massacre. Yeah, I'm not too thrilled about that either. But yeah, he's dangerous. They were attacking us with weird weaponry that now Kinley has some form of, but. So Kinley's a cultist? No. Could so he? that's a wild accusation to be throwing around, Finnegan. <laughs> be careful. I mean, as Finn, the one who is dressed head what, to toe. Yeah, like literally, as, as I said that, as a cult, I was gonna literally say that. I just looked at Kinley. Is like I'm fully decked out in, in cultist gear. Yeah, Lucy's oh. just like looking at you yeah. up and down. Why not? I'm not a keeper. You don't think that might draw attention? To who? Other cultists who are like, what's this dude just walking around in garb like it's no big deal? Like, what? Maybe, <laughs> totally, maybe, totally blowing the secret. Maybe they approach me, and when they do, I happen to have a star next to me that acqui- you know, has a conversation with them. Who knows? Um. So you finish up at the tattoo shop. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to do in town before you hit the road? Zara and I are walking around while they're doing that, so I don't think Zara wants to see anything happen to Kinley. So, so uh, how are you doing, Kinley? <laughs> I just kind of, the voice kind of comes from behind you, and you realize that he's probably been following you for a little while. Oh, come on. I'm not that ugly. Come on, you don't have to jump like that. It feels like can, and felt like I should. What's going on? You know, aside from the fact that I'm kind of pissed off about the bookshop. I wouldn't say it's the bookshop in general. It's more. It's Finnegan. Finnegan. No. Right? I mean. No, it's not Finnegan. I mean, he's terrible. No, no, he's he's just what my mother would call a nincompoop. Nincompoop. <laughs> oh well, if, if, if I would have known my mother, I think she would have called him a self-centered prick. Maybe your mother's nicer than mine probably was. I mean, she did leave me after all. Yeah, Sounds like a self-centered prick. <laughs> <laughs> You're not there, hush. <laughs> just, just what, what you found is what I've spent my whole life looking for. Just truth. Truth to prove that there's a better way of doing things and we've done things wrong. It's 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 not like it's not gonna be there later. 
but they're not gonna yeah. let me in. It's not like someone like me getting into a place like that. Well, I mean, <laughs> they let me in, and you know, sometimes the city of taverns in town don't want to let my ass in there. I mean, you know, in Victoria, I went in one and ended up beating two people with a chair leg. So, you know. Yes, but I am not one with a silver tongue or or getting a, or good at dealing with people. That's why I like books. That's why I deal with books. You're gonna get your chance, Ken. I'll I'll make sure that you get into that bookshop eventually. I can't promise it right now, but maybe after, you know, we get to know the owner a little bit better and she trusts us, you know, more. And um, we'll try and get you in there. But until then, if you ever need me to go look at something there, I'll be more than happy to uh, go in and look it up for you. I, I, I might not understand what I'm looking at, but I can definitely copy it down on a piece of paper for you. Well, I guess that's a start. Is that all that's bothering you? Because I'm not going to lie, it was quite a uh, display of emotion and that, that whole bathroom is Never gonna be the same. Kind of grins a little bit. It, it's just the way you came in with it. It felt like gloating about something that was very important to me. Well, I mean, to be fair, I didn't know it was really all that important to you. You told me it was important. It's not like I did it on purpose. I'm just kind of picking a little bit like, hey, look, look what the dumb fighter did. You know? You're not dumb, okay? It's just... Look, yeah, I, I know I tease you, Kenny. I, I, I do. But it's only because I like you. You've got a good head on your shoulders, and, you know, I feel comfortable doing that with you. You don't send me teasing Finnegan, I just pretty much tell him straight up he sucks. Yes. I mean, to me, proving Grandpa wrong and my parents right is... Wait, so your parents believe like you do, but oh, they have Grandmaster Granddaddy doesn't. My parents have seen things. They've they've done some incredible things. But they've also regretted deeply some of the terrible things that they've had to do. I mean, for a little while there, I kind of felt bad about breaking that cultist's fingers. And then I remember that he was a cultist trying to release demons upon the world and, you know, unleash some kind of demon point. I'm like, well, you know what? I'll think, I'll, I'll think he got what he deserved. Okay. I, I was ready to break his fucking legs, okay? See, see, you understand me, Kenley. This is why we get along so well. I mean, it's one thing, you know, destroying people for petty things like religion, but someone trying to destroy this world is a whole different story. I mean, I would take them apart piece by piece if I could get the information from them. See, you and I are on the same page. Look, I, I, I can't promise I'm not going to tease you because I'd be lying. I don't like to be a liar, especially to my friends. But uh, I want you to know not to take it personally. It's, it's kind of how I deal with life a little bit. I, I told you a little bit about, you know, my life before coming to keep in and I learned a long time ago if you can't make a joke about something life's gonna suck a lot more than it does yeah 
she nods and kind of wipes some of the tears out of her eyes. And... and and look at the bright side. At least you're not walking around looking like you know um, a half can of meat and a whole can like Lucy. <laughs> He's gonna kill her when he gets back. <laughs> you know, Lucy's one of my oldest friends. Well, I mean, since you know, getting out of prison and being forced to become a keeper and all. Um, but uh, not gonna lie, it's gonna be funny watching her run and him kind of chase her in his underwear. That's gonna be. <laughs> That's going to be pretty hilarious. Yeah. It will be entertaining. Alright. Well, would you say we make our way back to the rest of the group so we can get on the way, okay? Alright. We'll, we'll stop off and I'll buy you some meat on the stick. It always makes me feel better. Alright. And... She will actually, like, turn and give you a hug, and then, I'm sorry. He kind of, like, awkwardly gives you a hug back and kind of pats your back, and, you know, after a moment, it's not so awkward, but at first, it's kind of like, oh, God, she's touching me? Oh, God. Oh, what do I do here? Um, oh, oh, there, 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 there. <laughs> You have no need to apologize. Let's get back to the others. All right. So you work your way back to the shop where they're currently kind of firmly scolding Finnegan for attempting to sell the, you all into slavery in order to pay for the tattoo that he wanted. Yeah, and we're you, outside you, you of the of shop. Trade. Just, just sort of catch the very tail end of that conversation. Like, I'm sorry, he was gonna do what? I've, I've got like the meat on a stick, like halfway in my mouth, and I'm yeah, kind of like, like biting down on it slowly with ah. my eyebrow arched. Oh, oh yeah, Zara, I need to tell you about something. This little man right here thinks it's a good idea to sell his companions to get a stupid tattoo i mean sell trade, trade. same difference i mean it wasn't you can be upset against, it wasn't about... gonna be against her will it was just gonna be like uh hey that's that's what slavery is dude you're gonna, you're gonna hang out with them instead of with me so it might have been a you know a pro pro kind of thing no cons see <sighs> slavery's a i would trade you word. for this guy i would but Lucy, you can be upset about the slavery thing without putting down the tattoo thing, because the tattoos were pretty wicked. <laughs> oh, <it is> <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> However, <laughs> does not excuse the slavery comment. Sorry, just going to stare at you for a minute and then go, we got made on a stick. Yeah, it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> let's Let's go to the well. Like, <laughs> Got meat on a stick. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so you pack up everything you need. You checked out of the hotel formally. You How much do we owe for the hotel? Sorry. Uh, oh, what did it say that it was? I haven't been keeping super good track. You've been here for three nights. Uh, yeah, five. It's, yeah, third night. So... It's probably like just a couple of gold to cover the party. I mean, because we had a total right. of instead of I... five five players, we had seven players staying nights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that somebody gave me for uh, group stuff, so I'll just pull it out. Of... Oh. Cool. Whoa. Yeah, who would give you group gold? Hmm. The choices were made. Um, so you hit you hit the road. You know that I'm the main, super dependable. the path to Vinewood, which is here under this P, is while the main road gets you a good chunk of the way there, 
the road to Vinewood itself is a little more of like an off the beaten path kind of a trail rather than like a main uh, like shipping route kind of a thing. They like to, the fact that they're sort of tucked away in a in a literal valley. Right? It's all rolling hills and plains in the general area. They're just kind of sitting in this valley. Um, and they like that. So they just sort of they didn't really pave out the roads in a significant way or build it out. They just sort of stay nestled in the woods and um, rolling hills and valleys and sort of tucked away in its little mud. It, so it takes you a decent chunk of the day to, to get there just because of the time you spent in the morning doing your, your powwow with the, in the reading room and then getting together at the tattoo shop and then getting back up, da, 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 hitting the road. You roll into Vinewood towards like a late supper, early evening kind of a time frame. So it's like nighttime, essentially. Okay. Um, but that would put you, no. Would put you here. So you would enter into town from this sort of northeast corner, top right corner on that main sort of thoroughfare that's known as Artist's Alley. It's where all of your um, like musical instrument makers and those general kind of artisans are all residing, people selling the art that they're making. Um, and all of those sorts are there. There's the main market where you're gonna find all of your standard food and drink and supplies and things like that. The major Eliasin for the town is there. It's quite a bit bigger than um, the ones you've seen of recent, as this is a, a capital. It's like a decently big hotel. Um, at least a few stories up, they can room a good number of people here, which makes sense given the number of theaters and performance halls, recital halls, amphitheaters, like you name it. If it's a performance venue, they have one here and they're all nice and big, you know, seating a couple hundreds of people and stuff like that. So they need the kind of room and board that an in that size would entail. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of residential scattered around. There's a few major sites in, uh, that you can see, um, like the Grand Recital Hall and a few other theaters that sort of stand out amongst the lower residential buildings and stuff like that. And then at the heart of the town is the well, which you realize, like the description that you had read of the, in the pilgrimage described it as like a 50 foot tall well with water perpetually running off the sides uh, into a, like a huge body of water. And then you walk up and you're like, yep, that's, yep, that, that matches the description all right. Um, You'd never seen a well quite that tall before. It just, um, Damn. like when you get close to it, it's a bit like this, um, like up on a high pedestal kind of a thing. And the water just sort of runs off the four sides, just perpetually out of the top, feeding all of this waterways out into the rest of the valley and the kingdom at large. Okay. Is there like any temples that we can see near the edge of the water? So you do see this structure here, which it's fairly run down. It doesn't look maintained like a temple, but it, in terms of the general size and prominence of the structure, it looks like it might fit the bill. Um, knowing that with the religion being defunct, much like the shrines at the tree, it, you're expecting it to be in a, a bit of a state, but that at least catches your eye as a first option. Okay. As we're going through, I'd like everybody to keep an eye out for like any cultist regalia or symbols or anything like that if they happen to pop up or see somebody's keychain or something like that like hey i spotted some oh wait it's just yeah. been again <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, by, by this point i probably wouldn't be wearing the cloak but i'd still have the just the necklace out okay 
le less know obvious, if there's some... but like accidentally showing the necklace. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You right, never right. know if there's some cultists walking around that are that dumb that can, you know, have their their stuff out. So we're just going forward, like, hey, you're in this too. <laughs> uh, so find you, one. you can go ahead. Yeah, um, you can go ahead and make a general perception check for that kind of keeping your eyes peeled. And I got a better roll. Keeping the eyes peeled. I see everything. <laughs> a lot of us do. Wow, everybody's like on high alert. Um, which Can they get a nine? No. <gasps> so you realize that the the town is pretty hustle and bustle. Um, like Sogo was pretty packed for the tournament that was going on, but this seems like just sort of the par for the course kind of crowded that this city is it you're there's a lot of crossing uh come and go traffic that feels like this is people that live here more so than visitors they're they're in their natural element and the town is just that much of a bustling city despite the how it's perceived as being tucked away you don't spot any cultist regalia on display um do I notice anyone staring at me weirdly because of my necklace, though? Nobody seems to take notice of your necklace. You do think there might be a couple of people giving you second glances as you stroll through town, but not more than that at the moment. Just kind of like double takes and things of that general sort. We're walking around with a turtle. I can understand that. Not a hit towards you. I'm just saying. I'm assuming there's not like a large grouping of turtles roaming the island. Probably not. I haven't met many. Yeah, there would potentially be a few here and there on the island, but for the most part, they kind of stay coastal, and Redan is very much not a coastal island by nature, so. They stay out on the, what was it, Verilk? Yeah, in the archipelago. Yeah. So do you guys want to, like, go find rooms for the night and then go explore, or should we take a closer look? around here, or what do we want to do? Mm, I mean, checking in for lodgings could be a good idea if you want if we want to go explore that. What I'm going, going to assume is the temple yeah, you mentioned um, earlier. I might uh, go kind of skulk over by there while you guys uh, secure some lodgings. See what I can peek at while I'm there. I want to go swimming. Can I go swimming near the well? You'd have to Same. ask the town guards. Well, if it's not allowed, I won't, but I'm gonna definitely give it a shot if it's not. You know, I could get Fishdashia back and have him take a look first. We're using a lot of ch fancy chalk, though. That's true. Let's see if we can do it first. Okay. <laughs> Lucy's gonna glance at Kinley. Are you coming to check in in the inn, or are you gonna go with Czar or these two take a swim? I might as well get my room first and then look around town and see what we can find. Alright, so Kelly and Lucy will be looking for an inn. Hopefully none in the light. Yes, it. Oh, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. No, not the Elias. <laughs> so, built this, we built this whole campaign for us to go to Elias Inns. We're going yep. to Elias yeah. Inns. <sighs> the franchise just for us. Yeah. <laughs> it, honestly, part of it was I thought the name the name was clever, and part of it was I thought it would make life a lot easier for everybody if there was a consistently 
consistent <laughs> in in every city you've been to. Oh, like, oh, oh hey, it's like the same staff, and it, oh, it's like the same general layout, and oh, they have the same menu, and they serve the same beer, and it's like, but no. And then it just comes and, out creepy. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, creepy, and now like, can we go to the hotel instead? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, it's like 15 gold a night, but you could stay at the boutique hotel if you want to. <laughs> you know, the... The river riverfront bungalows that are like out on the water. And like, yeah, you can do that if you want to. You're gonna pay for it though. Sure um, will. <laughs> no, I you you can legitimately find like smaller mom and pop inns or like boutique hotels, bed and breakfasts, that kind of stuff in town as well. They don't the Eliasin isn't the only place to stay in town, it's just the largest hotel in town. Um to kind of absorb but tonight one. they all seem to be occupied except for the lies in so weird now you can't <laughs> weird how just it just works out that way it's fine, it's totally Acadie, fine. No idea. um but anyway so you approach the edge of this large lake with the the, t the weeping well kind of hanging high above you, sort of watching, like staring down on you, sort of looming overhead. Uh, and you make like you're getting ready to dive in, and this little old man is hey, hey now, hey, hey, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Are there sharks? Sharks? <laughs> it's fresh water. <laughs> Ridiculous. Are there man-eating fish in there? There's a monster and it lives in that lake. A monster? Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, How snap, snap you right up. Won't what even think twice about it. What kind of monster? It's, uh... I, I only saw it the once. But I swear it was... I mean, like... Big! Real big! And, what did it uh, look like? Like... Well, it uh, had a long neck and uh, just big, razor sharp teeth and whoo, scary. And I. Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> that would no. be. Um, no. That would be a reliable frame of reference for this. <laughs> it's not the Loch Ness Monster, but that is a, a accurate um, point of reference, yes. Storytelling he's going with. <laughs> So it's, that's uh, it, so he's oh. like, yeah. It can, can cannot cannot go swimming in that water. Like, like are we actually legally? not allowed to? Well, no. I just I don't recommend it. I s gonna get eaten. I we, cast we, water. We, I we cast stay, water. We stay clear. We stay clear. We just <laughs> the the kids all know. I mean, I, I stand here and I yell at them when they forget, but they know, they know it's there. Well, thank you for your <laughs> concern. I cast Keep water breathing on us. <laughs> and Finnegan's like, just gonna like, just jump. And as he jumps, he's going to transform into a reef shark in front of the old man landing in the water. <laughs> He doesn't have a lot of tact, but uh, you keep those kids out of the water, all right? Um, You're doing a good job. Yeah. Keep your I'll, neighbors safe. I'll be sure to, to use you as a lesson, that's for sure. Use <laughs> <laughs> you as a lesson. What if they come back, though? What is that poor old man gonna do? <laughs> Still tell a story and tell people not to get in the water. Yeah. I'll uh I'll keep an eye on him. <laughs> I guess I'll go in too, but I'm gonna like stay right near the shore and just like look underneath to see if I could see where Finnegan went. <laughs> okay. Um well it's nighttime and the, so the water is dark. It's not Cool. Lit, lit by any significant sources, so just kind of disappears into the inky water. 
kind of like, yep, definitely keeping an eye on him, all right. Yep. Yep. See him, see him clear, as, clear as day down here. He's I right here. Like He's just like right here. Don't you worry. I, I don't got dark vision. <laughs> I feel like casting light might be uh, uh, like saying, hey, I'm bait. <laughs> and you just, and this maw just comes out of nowhere and snatches you. <laughs> uh, maybe coming back during the day would be a better choice. It probably would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Finnegan's already dived down, though. I'm just gonna put it out for you. It's fine. We'll be fine. I mean, worst case scenario, you lose a druid. <laughs> Do reef sharks have dark vision? 30 feet. Better than nothing. And how fast do you swim? Oh, wait, no. Technically, it's not dark vision. It's blind sight. So, blind I mean, I, ca I can't see it, but I'll know what's there. <laughs> how fast do you swim? 40 feet. So, 80 if he dashes. So do so you like... see the wall coming before you run into it at full speed? <laughs> Excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. If you're if you're really barreling full speed ahead, you probably wouldn't. I, I don't think I would be barreling anywhere knowing, oh shit, I could die from a giant animal down here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, oh shit, but it glows. I was gonna say I'm gonna do detect magic, but I don't think I am. I think I'm just gonna sit there and keep an eye out. You should, you should get up on the shore and detect magic and just put your head in the water. <laughs> yeah. Cause you don't have to worry about breathing, you just can lick no. all you want. No, I think I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so you are swimming around in this lake are you looking for something in particular while you're down here or are you just I mean, scouting in general all or? i all i know is if i see coral reef again i'm going to burn the place down from the well to top of the top well to making everything falling on each other and i'm just going to light it on fire oh okay you mean the sponge yeah the giant yeah. coral sponge yeah if i find another one here Oh, so, so you swim swim down to the bottom of this body of water, and uh, yeah, no, um, go ahead and make <laughs> a perception check for just general swimming around in the water, and then because your passive perception is only a twelve as a shark, and then um, and that's pretty solid. And then you said you're not looking for anything specific; you're just kind of scoping the place out. I mean, technically, I'd keep on guard for anything that looks like it would, you know, attack and murder me. Mm -hmm. Well, no, but I mean, I mean, like, are you investigating the area? Uh, oh yeah. Or you would I, need an investigation role, or are you just sort of giving would, it a once over? I would. I'd definitely give it a once over. Okay. For tonight, and then we'd come back with more of a investigation together. Okay, that's that's what all I was checking for. I just so, want to make sure that there's nothing lurking down here to kill Shelly when we do come back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's main objective. My AC has got to be better than yours. <laughs> I mean, for right now, but I still definitely swim faster than you. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. So nothing attacks you as you swim around <laughs> in this water. <laughs> I love how you word that. You do kind of get the sensation that there is something else in the water with you, but it's keeping its distance. It's not getting close enough to get within your blind sight radius. It's just sort of at the periphery, sort of kind of scoping you out as you scope out the bottom of this lake, kind of so debating I, whether like, or not it wants to attack you. Like I feel the movement in the water, the ripples or whatever, but yeah, I don't it, see anything. Yeah, it, there, there's enough there that you get the sense that, like, okay, there's a reef shark in this water, that's me. There's some fish in this lake, that's them. And then there's that thing. I don't know what that thing is, but there's a thing. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, after I scope it and I don't get murdered, 
uh, I will end my exploration. <laughs> so, you s swim back up to Shelly and pop out of the water and are not eaten as of the moment, but you definitely were like, okay, the old guy wasn't completely crazy. So, there's fish in there. Uh-huh. There was me in water. there. And there's me in there, and there's water. But there's also something else in there that I couldn't see, but I definitely could feel that it was there. Um, but it, I didn't die, so, I mean, maybe it's a friendly, you know? Maybe. Or not. Who knows? You know, I should see if I can find a, a scroll of Speak with Beasts before I mean... we jump in again. Maybe I can get it and, like, learn it as a ritual, and... No, I can't. <laughs> that was on the on the plan, but I don't have my my book, so it's not my plan. But man, that would be cool if I could talk with animals, and it was an animal, which I don't know if it's an animal. But we definitely need to have light because I can't see shit down there. I mean, technically, tomorrow if we want, I can acquire speak with animals. Ooh. It might be worth it. I mean, if it's an animal. It could be like a dinosaur. It definitely could be a, a, a dinosaur underwater. Yep. I mean, we got dinosaurs in, in the, the druid place, right? I, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there's also dinosaurs in the druid place. Looking at it's it, a like, magical... Really, it was a... Uh, really the, the skeptical. Plesiosaurs. That's what mm. they're called, right? Yep. Ben again thinks you're just making up names and creatures. Dinosaurs have been dead for a long time. You're a great druid. I'm telling you from what I've seen, <laughs> dinosaurs have definitely been dead for a while. Anyway, we should probably go find the others. I kind of want to, in the morning, like see if we can get up onto the, like, is there land? around the well itself? Like, is it on an island, or does it just shoot up out of the middle of the water? Um, it... It's a little dark for you to tell for sure, because of how far out in the middle of the water it is. It looks mostly like it's just kind of sticking up out of the water. It doesn't seem to have much of a island around the base uh, of it, but it's a little hard to tell in the dark. I would like to go, like, look around the actual well in the morning before we go straight down. It might be possible to, like, go up instead. Did the book say anything about where to go? Like, is it uh, in the well or under it or near it? The pilgrimage site would be to the temple that was traditionally on the edge of the lake. Okay. Also, um, the the big thing to keep in mind is the the pilgrimage wasn't to like the iron ball itself. Right. Nobody was nobody was down there putting their hands on it, but um, right. it was to the, like the general ish location thereof. So I mean, it gets you in the ballpark. DM's discretion, but uh, if I use locate object on said iron sphere. Just like the similar one we had at the other, you know, under the tree. I use that here. Is that, am I familiar enough with that sphere to locate object on said sphere? Well, you know that the nature of the magic that protected it was explicitly designed to prevent that kind of magic from working. That's why the cultists needed the magic item that they needed to help them find it because that's able to like once you dial it in properly attune it to a pillar it's able to pierce through that protection and okay. find it so just a regular locate object isn't going to get the job done I cast at ninth level is that old guy still standing around uh he's kind of meandered off around the lake he's he's kind of on his self-appointed guard duty of the the lake, making sure nobody goes swimming like they're not, because they don't want them to get eaten. I thought you were going to tell me he's on his, like, old man walk around the, to get his exercise in around the circle. I mean, kind of. 
yeah, a little bit, but no, he's he's sort of self-appointed as the protector of people and making sure nobody goes swimming and getting eaten by the crazy monster in the in the water. If I see him again, I want to talk to him. But if he's walking away, then that's fine. Just in the future, like while we're here. Yeah, I mean, you you get the sense that this is kind of his pa general pastime. So you, you feel like you're got a good shot of running into him again with the amount of time you're expecting to spend them around the lake in in general. <laughs> All right, let's go find the others. Okay. Probably Andy Elias is. <laughs> I thought you wanted to go to the boutique hotel. Don't you want I to didn't. Super I didn't say nothing hotel. about the boutique hotel. I was like, is there any other? No. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Zara was going to go uh, check out what looks like it might have been an old rundown temple. Okay. Um. So you can see, like, it's dark. It's nighttime. It's generally closed up for the night kind of a thing. It's an open air sort of structure. It seems like it's sort of become almost like a park at this point, more so than a temple. Um, people use it as a place to picnic. There's benches and things of that sort kind of dotted about. So, so would... visually kind of like maybe something like Stonehenge, but a park area inside or... Yeah, yeah, kind of. Um, it is covered, or like it is in enclosed, so um, it's, it would be protected from the rain, which is what makes it appealing as kind of like a park spot is that people can okay. hang out there. There's none at this point in the night, but you would expect during the day that this would be a place for like buskers to be out and about performing, trying to scrounge up some loose change and like that that kind of a vibe to the space. It's It feels like a a city park at night more so than a temple at this point just like you're not seeing a lot of iconography on the walls or any of that stuff you, you get the general sense that they've scrubbed this place down like they did the, the shrines at the tree okay um what during or, or the research that shelly did and shared with us mm -hmm. um the ritual was it generally per performed at a certain time of day Um, not really. It, it's kind of a when you get there, you get there kind of a thing. The, the pilgrimage doesn't really have like a strict sort of time constraints necessarily. Okay. Um, I just know like some rituals like, you know, at the dawn, dawning of the third age, when the moon rises full on the solstice kind of thing. But Yeah, it, it's more of a sort of a general it, it's less of like a formal formal ritual in that sort of sense of like marking a specific time of year or a specific event or any of that kind of stuff it's more of a gesture confirming that you are here kind of a thing okay. like um everybody kisses the blarney stone yeah kind of a ritual more so than like a a real full-blown Priest-led ritual. Okay. Um, so, so the area is still open, even though there's like not people, full, a lot of people around, right? Yes. Yeah, and you can see that the structure, as in the, the shape that it's in, goes right up to the edge of the water. It seems like this would be the place where they would put their their paper lanterns out onto the lake. Okay. Um, Zara's gonna go in. And kind of like make his way to the center and uh since he figures this would be a good time without a lot of people around for him to do his little ritual thing while he's here and try and uh commune and connect with those uh you know celestial powers in the world or whatever mm -hmm. you know from his perspective i could say it a lot better as a player but from his perspective you know, just kind of like reach out and make contact or whatever and do the ritual while he's holding his little paper lantern. 
Oh, okay. You're going like all in on ritual at this point. Yep. I thought you were just doing like a general like, hey, this is Czar, just checking in and saying hi. Um, no, that would be yeah, the morale. I got gotcha. you. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you can you can do that. You can, um, you know, you kind of say a few prayers, some moments of silent contemplation, and you kind of take in what's left of the temple around you, acknowledging. Uh, make an investigation check for me. Or yeah, make an investigation check and a religion check. We'll we'll stack them on top of each other. All right. God. All right, guys. I'm rolling dice. Get ready for the luckies. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna use two of my luckies to reroll both of those. We knew it was coming sometime tonight. Uh, religion. Oh my god. Alright. Uh, last lucky for one more religion. I think that investigation's good. And... Yeah, I think? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. There we go. I... Lucky work, guys! Lucky work for once! It did me good. So okay. 22 investigation, 15 religion. So um, you're having this sort of moment of deep reflection, trying to kind of pseudo flashback to when the religion was thriving and this temple was booming and the pilgrimage was a steady stream of, of people paying their respects to the six and all that kind of stuff. And you kind of look around and you can see remnants of things. For the most part, it's either been actively scrubbed away or weather worn away from disrepair and disregard uh, but you can see little bits and pieces of things as you look around you kind of can envision it in your head what it might have used to look like once upon a time and like what some of that iconography might have been in terms of statues and things like that um you know you can see like slight stone discoloration in places where there might have been a podium at one point that kind of stuff um, and you, you sort of reach out to the six and to the archangels that you've met already, knowing that they are out there, and then approach the edge of the water, light your paper lantern, and float it out onto the lake, which um, Shelly and... Uh, So Finnegan, this happens while you're down doing your swimming still, but Shelly, you do see this lantern float out from that structure on the edge of the water out into the lake, um, kind of knowing that that was a place that Zar was planning to go give a look. You assume that that's him sort of following the rituals that you read about in the, the pilgrimage book and copy down for for you guys um and it just kind of quietly floats out onto the water drifting and just kind of sits there out towards the the middle it doesn't make it all it doesn't float all the way into the well itself because of the steady flow of water off the sides it sort mm -hmm. of keep, keeps a steady outward push of water uh, but it sort of floats out into the center-ish of the lake. All right. So Zara's kind of feeling pretty special right now and proud of himself. So he's going to rent himself a bungalow on the lake for the night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's um, out on this lake up here. Not on this lake down here. It's out on oh. this lake here. Oh, well, never mind that. That's uh, too far away. <laughs> I guess I'll go to the creepy Elias Inn afterwards. <laughs> yeah, the, the area immediately surrounding the lake is mostly um, like a park space, like I said. And then um, it's all like market, artist alley, residential districts scattered about, and things of that sort. Um, but 
Yeah. Um, I would say on his little uh, planter, he, he would have written in um, taking the time to write in the uh, uh, proper runes, which probably takes him a little while to do it because you know he's not the best at it. But basically, kind of a thing like, "Hey, how about a phone call?" kind of deal. <laughs> Yeah, that, that feels right. That feels right. That feels All right. right. Phone call, uh, a cell phone just drops out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> it clunks you on the head. Like... The TARDIS appears. Mm-hmm. No, see, it, it lands in the lantern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just falls down. Into the water and it breaks. Yeah, and then yeah. I gotta swim out and get it and get eaten by the monster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been the plan all along. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I, after doing all that, I would head back to the end. See if Kinley and Lucy got our rooms. We done. Which Lucy did. We done. We done got the rooms. Okay. So, what I need to have you guys do real quick is oh. uh, everyone. This is going to be a loaded, loaded question of a roll. I feel like, <laughs> but I got to do it anyway. <laughs> Everyone who has, like, embraced the six as deities, go ahead and roll a d100 apiece. So, very, very politely, I'm assuming that that excludes Lucy. Oh, yeah. fuck me. For now. Maybe. Depends. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do much better than you. <laughs> We're all so good. My faith is still kind of low. <laughs> I already blew all my luckies just to do my thing right, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, Shelly's all in, so. I mean, Zarya's pretty much too at this point, because, you know, he never had a religion beforehand. What? Things are gonna need to happen for Lucy to be swayed. Yeah. Um, which, that, that's a fair, that's a fair point. So I would let, um, Shelly and Zar basically, like, roll it with advantage. Because you have, you have kind of, like, doubled down. Yes! hey <laughs> Better. Way so. better. Look at that, then. We did it good again. <laughs> so, um... With that, you check into the Eliasin, you go to bed, everyone lulls off to sleep soundly, unless anyone has any sort of crazy schemes that they want to do before they go to bed. What, no, sell your teammates in, into slavery for a tattoo? Nah, I'm done. No, we're gonna save that one for some other day. No, <laughs> only for tattoos. Fun. Yeah, only we'll, for tattoos. We'll, we'll, we'll only circle, for we'll tattoos. Circle, circle back to that around session 20, 25. <laughs> um, Lucy would sure only that'll start working on her letter, but then would eventually go to bed. So, whether by Coincidence or your paper lantern message getting through? <laughs> Good stuff. Um, you find yourselves yet again in that dimensional space that We're in heaven. angels call home. Yes, it's heaven. Oh boy. And basically they're looking a little um Well, they're look they were looking a little nervous when you when you popped in. But you can also tell that they're looking hardier than they were the last time you were here. You kind of get the sense that they're getting a little bit of that spark back. Um, Wait, who's they in met the someone now? they love. <laughs> Are we all in there? Yes. Oh. oh did, did you get my message? What message? Shh, Lucy. Oh. Let the angels talk. <sighs> <laughs> we did. Um, we were kind of already planning to do, but 
it's good that we were on the same page, right? Like, that, uh, yeah. that's probably a good sign. Um, did did you guys find another pillar? Because we we completely lost you yesterday, and we so. like just poof gone off the radar. We could not see you at all, and then we got kind of worried. Um, but then we were like, oh, maybe they found a pillar, so we needed to like pull you in and do a check in and be like, hey, how's it going? Oh. Uh, did you find one? Because that would be great. Are, are you ready to have your minds blown? Sure. They, they kind of look at each other and there's a bit of like, nod, like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know about the old pilgrimage of the Six, right? Vaguely, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just... Where, you know, mortals would go to certain spots on the island and pray and do little rituals and things like that. Well, we believe that pilgrimage led them to each one of the holy sites where the pillars sit. And we found the route for the pilgrimage. Oh, so then you like you do know where they are then? Uh, well, y yes, um, except for I think one is in a kingdom that we've never heard of and we only know four pillars, but there's five stops on the pilgrimage, so. But we're at the Weeping Well now, which apparently is a thing. Hmm. Oh. So then the... The tree, and then the... Oh, I get it. I get it. That makes sense. That makes sense. The... They're... They're, they, oh, they were really smart. They were really, really smart. Uh, right? They were, like, god smart. Yeah, which, I mean, that like, uh, that makes <laughs> sense. But, like, they using the the elements of the material plane to, like, reinforce them. That's real smart. Oh, they really, they really thought that whole... Well, I don't know why they didn't just leave us a copy of this spell. That would have made life so much easier. Well, um, you're looking really good, by the way. Yeah, Feeling, feeling good. Uh, well, feeling better. It's uh, still getting used to not being alone. Um, but yeah, you know, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. We're doing, we're doing better. We're doing good. Yeah. You're getting some good energy from Rodus. We would assume that's where it's coming. Yeah, you. Um, yeah, the like prayers and some like. Incense burning and things of that sort going on over there. Um, we're, we're mostly we're mostly keeping tabs on you guys, to be honest. But we know that there's like good vibes coming our way. Yeah. Well, I don't want you to get too excited, but we uncovered information to train a cleric of the six. Oh man, we haven't had a cleric in forever. <laughs> 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 Shelly's like, what, I'm not good enough for you? <laughs> no, you're doing fantastic. I mean, look at the people that you've surrounded yourself with. You guys. Oh, they didn't I'm... say it out loud. Oh, you're just thinking it? <laughs> okay. So they don't say all that, because they would very much try to, like, boost your confidence. Um, but, like, yeah, you know, um, with you, A, like, which domain did you find? Uh, let's see, which domain was it again? Um, Resi resistance or resilience or resilience? Oh, you found. Oh, that might be that might be handy. Oh. Are, well, are we you... actually we actually know of a book that has all of them in it. However, we just had access to the one for now. Hmm. So. Is it going to be one of you five? You're going to be the take over the whole cleric thing, or uh, I wouldn't say that, but you never know. I mean, I think Shelly would make a wonderful cleric. She it's already feels she's a lot, a lot of responsibility being. A, well, I mean, like the first cleric. Like, well, well, well I, yeah, but. They, they heal people already, and they're so friendly and nice and helpful. I mean, it fits what a cleric should be, right? Yeah. I mean, no, I kind of already do some of that stuff. I don't. I don't know. Well, like Shelly, like we've we've already kind of like worked out a thing. Huh? 
Uh, but like, I, I, I'm just, you don't want to just pick any random oh. Joe Schmo to be like the first cleric in forever. Like, I, I plan a lot on of, having, lot of responsibility, you know. I plan on having Kinley, which, you know, she, she's super small, um, working out an entire vetting and application process to make sure that we find the right candidate. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, I like I like the sound of that. That's a good plan. Oh, no, Valeria! And I sort of rush over toward Valeria. Mm -hmm. Look what I made! And I pull out my sword. You hand it over? Yeah. So, takes it from you, kind of looks it over. Ooh, that's actually some uh, decent penmanship on the runes there. Um, I I've been practicing almost every night. Oh, my heart! Can tell. It's looking good. Um... You gonna it's kind of interpreting what the runes mean it's a particularly we did talk about the whole violence thing well is... yeah but 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 this is this is particularly to be used against those cultists that are trying to release the demons mm-hmm that I suppose that's fair. I would, I mean, makes me a little uncomfortable, but they are cultists, I suppose. That's could have. Hmm. But yeah. So where did you disappear to? Because like we were tr trying to keep tabs on you, and you just woof, did, completely lost you. That's why we thought you found a pillar. Well, well I guess when we got to uh, what's the place called again? Wormwood. Vinewood. Vinewood. Vinewood where the weeping well is. I mean, if you lost track of us earlier today, that's probably when we would have gotten there. No, no, it was uh, yes yesterday. Oh. All of uh. us? Wasn't it when you two were in this special library? Well, no, um... Did you lose track of all of us, or was it just like, who were you watching? Uh, oh, well, we were, I mean, we try to keep watch on everybody, but, um, you know, Ambriel's kind of got her soft spot for you there, Shelly. Um, <laughs> so, but we lost, we lost you, the two of you, Shelly and Zara, the, the, the both of you just went, like, completely ghosted. And we, we were like, we they're on top of this, nailed it, found another pillar, just kicking yeah. butt, taking names. Well, that... we, uh... <laughs> Go ahead, Shelly. You well, yeah, we... it better than I. We found uh, somebody who keeps track of books, and they uh, they were the ones who have the the like the the holy text, and they've got the pilgrimage book, and they've got the cleric book, and they've also got a spell book of one of the generals hidden away. If you know how to get rid of that, I can let her know because that's super dangerous. Yeah, I uh, I wish I knew. I would love to have that off the, the chessboard. Yeah. Uh, it's just sitting in her closet? I mean, it's it's under a lot of protection, which is probably why you couldn't see us, because they have, like, a lot of levels of, like, non-detection and stuff like that in there. Uh-huh. So that might be why your sight was nullified while we were there. That's a little scary. Don't, don't, not really... Not really thrilled with that idea that you can just fall off the face of the earth like that. That's not good for us. That's, oh. that's not good for you. We I mean, what if what if we get enough oomph to intervene and then we can't find you because you're in like a crazy invisible room thing? Well, I mean, it's not like we knew you wouldn't be able to see us, so it's not like we can tell when that happens. So, I mean. Oh, by the way, we found a really powerful fiend in Lucy Piston. Oh, come on. Why you gotta do me like that? <laughs> also, we found a way outside of the bubble. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, it. That Lucy just glaring at Zara at the moment. So, I mean, don't worry, the fiend doesn't know about the way outside of the bubble. We, we didn't tell him, because they didn't know at the time. Right. So you can see the like 
anxiety attack building in Ambriel's face. Like, if, if, I mean, she could get, if she could get her hands on a brown oh. paper bag right now, she'd be hyperventilating into it because... I, oh. I don't think there's any reason to panic just yet. It's... I think that the fact that we found it was entirely just due to luck. Like, I don't think anybody else is going to just stumble onto it at any point in the near future. I mean, what you did was pretty ingenious, though. You have to give yourself credit for it. That whole, like, die packet thing. Brilliant stuff, Shelly. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, um, as to, you know, the uh, really extremely powerful, um, time slowing fiend, um, I think he's just content cutting people in half right now as a gladiator, fighting his time. So, I don't think he's going to cause much of a problem. Other than cutting people in half, I suppose. But he's, you know, they're getting healed. He's... Yeah, it's like it's like everything's normal, and then you just feel like you've been slowed down to like half. Speed. Oh, I can do like that. A slow spell. On multiple <laughs> target in the snap of fingers, Finnegan. Yep, yeah, didn't seem cast a spell or anything. He just sort of did it. And then he oh. laid his weapon on my shoulder and almost cut me in half. Yeah, that was a nasty, uh, sight. So it just doesn't have to say verbal components to make slow happen. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. What the magic people said. So, um... You doing okay? You look... You look a little pale. Uh... You need some juice? <laughs> Do you need some juice? So, get you some milk. Finnegan, out of the like corner of your eye, you happen to catch um, Marin like making a the most subtle she can manage of like a ex don't don't tell him don't don't tell him don't just mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, um, gesture towards Ambriel as she's very much on the verge of having a nervous breakdown and Ambriel's just like. That you, it's a. Uh, uh, it was. Are you are you, are you okay? Ye, poof. Um. Do you know who that was? I'm gonna casually walk up to the other angel, nonchalantly. Mm hmm. Uh, it's. <laughs> so. It, uh, it kind of, kind of sounds like. Whew, um. You know the guy. You said they were a, a power, powerful fiend. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, and let me tell you what, Lucy was fearless. She just walked up and did whatever she did. And Shut said, it! So a fiend, huh? And then dude was not happy. Wait, that's what you did to piss him off? <laughs> yeah, because somebody named Finnegan wouldn't shut his mouth about me having some kind of Crush oh, on him. Are we gonna me to mo notice your uh, your me to mo notice your emotional needs to <laughs> that a is not my emotional to, need to an elf, by the way, that I've never seen before. Well, to be fair, I he knew he with, would. To be fair, he flirted with me, not Lucy. <sighs> oh really? Where'd it go, you? No, well, I'm good looking. Yeah. Shelly just looks at Ambriel and they're like, "Do you see what I've been dealing with?" So back, so back to this fiend fellow that you guys all seem to know something about. I look at the one next to me. She kind of what, like, are, what aren't you telling us? Uh, nothing. Mm -mm. Everything's fine. You guys it's left the, left the angle. left that town and uh, you're and staying away check. from staying away from there. And yeah, you can do that. Oh, that's a never boo. Oh. If we're inciting the angel, oh, I definitely. Jesus. I'm taking inside with an advantage because I know they're a lying oh, yeah. their ass off. Mm -hmm. Fucking lying angels. Well, I think we all know they're lying. They're lying at this. They're point. hiding something, but like. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> so yeah, like you, you kind of Finnegan knows that there's more. You know, there, there's a lot of tension between the three of them, like, eyes are shifting and they're debating whether or not they 
want to actually tell you. Um, and Ariel is just like, that kind of sounds like one of the generals. Oh, I mean, that's uh, what we figured, so... Yeah. I mean, yeah. this really strong. Cause like I said, he, he just like laid his weapon on my shoulder and it nearly cut me in half. Didn't even swing it. Mazar thinks we should get an army and surround him in the arena. Right, and everybody just shoot him. All at one time. What you think? That's that's probably not going to work on Sloth. Um, oh, Sloth? Sloth? That's a terrible name for a person. Well, not a person, is it? No. Humanoid? My bad. Oh god, are they all named after sins? <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they're, 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 the, yeah, well, I mean, we were kind of hoping we wouldn't have to get that far, but yeah, the, the Queen's seven generals are all personifications of the seven sins, and... Wait, is Rebecca the... the is, is Rebecca Lust? Becky isn't one of them. I mean, she's a succubus. But she's not a general. I mean, why? She's she, like a lieutenant. A... Okay. Did you ask her? Shelly would know. They're like best buds. Oh, because you guys—they tell everything between each other, right? 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 They write notes and stuff. Yeah. No. Um. But yeah. Not like, in front I've... of my angel. God. <laughs> Jeez. Well, <laughs> anyway, he made, he made us get out of town, and basically told us, you know, not to go. We back. come back, we're gonna die. So we're not going back to Soga for a while. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, but it turns out that that's not what we were looking for anyway, so it all worked out in the end. Right, but, Headmistress got that covered. But the general is guarding the well that has the exit and entrance into the dome, so... Well, hopefully yeah, he doesn't and... know it's there. I mean, unless they're looking for crowbars, no. <laughs> right, Shelly <laughs> left a crowbar there. From the... From the sound of it, it's it sounds like he's trying to reestablish his lair. That doesn't sound people. good. The, what is that? Yeah. They before we before they were all locked away, they all they each had a territory kind kind of th they had like a sphere of influence kind of thing that they and it's not good it gives them extra stuff oomph and things if their lair is up and running again they're going to be a bigger problem than they already were and... I mean they get home base advantage yeah so i have two questions one, what do you think we should do about these pillars to keep them safe? And two, do you think preventing these guys from layering is more or less important than finding the pillars? Ooh. Um... Also, what about that lost land that we don't know about? <laughs> I mean, didn't they mention in the armory before? Like, in our first... Oh, you think the fifth stop would be the armory? It could be. That would be helpful in killing a demon general. Do you know what happened... Yeah, do you know what happened to missing land for the from this island that's not on a map? Uh... No? I... Mm. Is this like, no as in, like, no, we don't know who that fiend is that you encountered, no? No, it's it's a it's a no. I, I uh must have been something the Empire did. Looks over at Kidley. What? Maybe the Empire wiped out that those inhabitants and it got incorporated into other kingdom. <sighs> That'd be our best try or hope. If a kingdom is missing, it was probably the Empire. But I wouldn't have. I don't have any notes of what would have happened right now. I mean, I I never really understood why they did what they did in the first place. It never made any sense to me. But then again, I was barely 
I was stuck here but just kind of clinging to things as best I could. It was kind of hard to really. Wait. Zora starts having a little bit of a panic attack. What? what wait. What, you don't think that the first emperor wiped out all of religions because he was a demon, do you? <gasps> he could have been a lieutenant and took over the empire. Ooh, conspiracy theories. Finnegan loves conspiracy And then wiped theories. out the only religion that could possibly... Well, I don't know about all that. I mean, doesn't he have, like, a lineage and stuff? I don't... I never really... Like, I, I could only kind of keep pseudo-tabs on it. I thought he had, like, grandkids and stuff. Oh, I, I don't know how demons work. I don't know. I... I would expect... It, but... what, if he, what if he's part half-demon? Could he have children then? I oh. mean, I would have to guess with as many paladins and stuff as walk around in the Empire that somebody would have picked up on the fact that the king loves yeah. red when they look at it. I don't, think a, demon, I don't think a demon... I don't think a demon would survive there long. Magic yeah. can do some crazy yeah. things. Yeah. Where did that idea come from, even? I don't know, but I like that idea. I like that thinking, <laughs> sorry. I, I don't know. It just it just popped in my head. You know how I work. It, th things just pop in my head. Yes. Take off that tinfoil helm and uh, <laughs> set it aside for the day. No. Um, so yeah. So you. Um, what you should do about the pillars and what's more important layers are well. Um, the well. I I would I would think. Stopping more generals from getting out is more important than st like the layer is going to make things tough. But you, uh, if we keep getting stronger, they're I mean they're getting stronger too. But that kind of cancels out, and then you guys are doing really good. And like we, I don't know about the whole fill a stadium with people plan. That sounds a little fishy, but. Like we might, we could maybe take them if it's just the one one or two of them, um, more so, so than if there's like seven of them. So when so, we find a pillar, which trust me we will soon, whether we it's, think we just did, but yeah. what, do we just go cool found it and then like move on to the next one? I mean, I don't. I can we borrow one of your dogs? Like, here's the problem, right? I know that, like, some spellcasters have the ability to, like, look in on places and put up, like, their own magical security cameras and stuff like that. I can't do that yet. So our chances right now are basically just to, like, hire people to sit outside and let us know when something bad happens. But, like, then it'll be too late because we <laughs> also can't teleport or anything like that. So our options are very limited. So unless you have some ability to help us with that, which would be cool. awesome. Also, if I bonk a general, would that work? I'm I'm sorry. If you what a general? Pull out the stick. If if I bonk them, would it work? You said it's important for them for the sta the staff to keep char keep magic. And Zara's gonna say, well, as long as they're not on the other side of the door. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I approve of that joke. God. I, well, I mean, possibly it would. I mean, the 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 magic of the the staff would work on them. I don't know if it would work necessarily. Like, it's not like a guaranteed thing. It's not. It's not general slang staff. I don't no, got that. No. no. Okay. I, I mean, it, I mean, if you hit them hard enough with it, it could technically slay a giant. But that'd be a really—you'd have to really whack them. That's probably not what you mean, though. His, um, his, his our how strong can you get? Well, it's, it's work in progress, but okay. pretty strong. I mean, you saw me pluck those ladies out of the swamp, right? It's true. He was able to pick these frail little ladies out of mud. Mm. Which one and turned what into a witch? Yeah, yeah, hag, and we had to kill her, but the other ones were okay. We saved some people. Um, Valeria, it's... 
do you know of perhaps like some kind of warding rune or something if we do find the pillar that maybe we could place alert us if like other people went into that area uh well i mean the there should still be the all of the protections that were on the other one should be on this one too so like the you can't teleport close to it you can't scry on it you can't like... right well i'm not trying to right. get in but maybe get something out yeah like like maybe if we find the entrance something we can put there that will alert us wherever we're at that someone's tampering with it kind of thing mm. hmm. like example we find one here they're not here so we're going to go to another one see if they're there Right, but so we could... If they show up here when we're looking somewhere else. Like like Shelly said, but whatever wizards do to the things, perhaps something that works more on uh, your level. Um, possibly? I, I don't know if you're up to laying down a rune like that yet. Um... You know, I mean, you're getting better. I saw the the sword, like that's a, um, coming along nice. But I also had an idea to make shackles with the protection rooms that I memorized on the inside of the spears to trap a demon if we need to to interrogate them. That's not a bad idea. Uh... I nominate Becky. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't try that. I wouldn't try that on a general. That's probably a bad idea. But on like a low level, like that would probably work okay. Yeah, you probably have enough for that at this point. I mean, she um, did threaten our lives. I'm okay with this idea. <laughs> but uh, hmm, there'd be. Trying to think what you could realistically do. You can try it. And, do you have a and magical see. door stop we could put in front of the door? <laughs> I mean, maybe like a you know like a like a deadbolt. Finnegan, she she just said that there's something that we could try. So just let her keep talking. I I don't know. I don't know if you've got enough. I don't know if we've got enough magic to. Uh, give you unlimited range on it but I, I think I have a rune that might be able to do what you're asking for I, it, it'll last it'll endure but if you get outside of a certain distance from it I don't know if you'll still get ping I, I just I don't know it, we're, we're gonna have to kind of hope for the best oh, something's better than nothing Yeah, she'll kind of call you over and she'll teach you how to do um, a new kind of rune that is essentially, um, it's basically like the alarm spell, mm -hmm. but it instead of having the eight hour time limit and a 30 foot range, it's a permanent effect on us, like the area that the rune covers, so it would probably realistically it would be like a five foot square that if anybody crosses it would trigger the alarm mm -hmm. um, but the range on it she just doesn't know how far away from it you can be before it stops pinging you when somebody trips it but it, it'll last it won't disappear after eight hours or anything like that but you if you get could be a hundred feet could be a hundred miles could be a thousand miles she just doesn't know what the okay. range is going to be on it I would say that would probably depend on how much juice I can pump into it. Yeah. Alright. So, no. Zara's gonna be busy learning that stuff and talking to her about his uh, full shackles ideas while, while everybody else does their things. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Um, Lucy's probably any? still bothered about the fact that Zar just blurted that out. 
like, I mean, you're throwing me under the bus in front of three angels. For, for, so, for, somebody parent, who's, yeah. for somebody who's big on secrets, Zar sure does love to just tell everybody everything that he knows. About other people's secrets. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll... hey, did you hear about the demons and the, the mountaintop and the monastery and all the dead people? And like, oh, and by the way, Lucy did this thing that was really embarrassing. And like, oh, by the way, oh, by the way. And it's like, wait, shut up. <laughs> Uh, before we go back, Shelly's gonna talk to Ambriel for a minute and uh, be like, so I tried to talk to you a few days ago. Did you hear any of that? Like, can you hear that? Usually, yeah. Um, we've been testing the waters a little bit on trying to reach back across to you guys when you do that um because you're not the only one slipping prayers our way these days kind of nudges in zar's direction um but like it's a little hit or miss because of the whole planes thing and the dimension like we're in this plane you're in a different plane and but um okay. it kind of it kind of seemed like we were getting close to being able to kind of ping you back now and again like it's not going to be a an open line of communication but at least like everyone's at least being able to let you know that we got it like i, I the whole um like sea salt smell thing that was the best i could do um, but yeah I, I mean i just I, I wanted to let you know in case you didn't hear me that uh you know because i always thought that you like told me that i had a destiny and then the keeper showed up and I thought that that was my destiny. But the more I, I'm here and, and doing stuff, I'm, I'm not really feeling it. Uh, so I've decided that instead of doing the keeper thing, that I was just going to work more for you. So, I mean, I, I hope that's okay. I mean, I, I'm okay. Are they gonna be okay with that? They're first two, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, well, I mean, one of them kind of thinks that they, well, they think that he's kind of dead. And one of them is kind of like being forced into it. But the other two are like real hardcore about it. Like one of them's like super family brought up into it. And the, well, both of them are really, they're like parents and grandparents and stuff. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, I'm still going to like have a badge and stuff for as long as I can. But they, they've always been kind of weird about people having dual loyalties in the keepers. Like, there's this story of some warlock who they really didn't like her because she had somebody else that she was taking orders from. But I mean, at least in your case, I feel like I'm doing good and helping people. I, I like to think we are, yeah. I mean, you guys have been doing a good job for them. I mean, there's the whole fingers thing. Yeah, no, that was not cool. We weren't really thrilled and, with the fingers thing. But and aside, today, one of them tried to sell us into slavery for t tattoo. Like, what is that? <sighs> yeah, no, that's that's where I'm at. So I just wanted to let you know that, you know, I'm here for you. And we're gonna do great things. Yeah, I mean, we're we're here for you too. That that's the was the whole idea. Of, like I do, trying to give you as much of an oomph as I can get you. But you know, we're 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 all just doing the this best we can. This is awesome, by the way. I yeah. love it. Is it helping? It is. Oh, so happy. I was I was a little worried, but if it's working for you, that's awesome. Yeah, and no, it's super cool looking too. So. We, I think we see eye to eye, like, aesthetically. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I, I feel like I'm getting your vibe a little bit, trying to, trying to, you know, work with you on this a little bit. You know, we're, we're all in this together. <laughs> all right, well, you know cool. I just wanted to let you know. 
So yeah, no, I I appreciate that, and and, and I'm fine with it's it's your your call. You know, I don't want to make you feel like you have to one way or the other. It's uh, your your destiny to fulfill. I'm just doing the best I can to help you without breaking anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you know, you told me that I had one, but you never really told me what it was, and so I wasn't really sure if I was like gonna screw something up or like I didn't want to be like well you know fuck the keepers and then it turns out that you know that was what I was supposed to be doing so fuck keepers yeah it uh destiny's kind of a kind of a tricky thing if you tell somebody what it is you risk like breaking it and this was a destiny that we don't really want to break. So I'm just being very careful with how much I, how, yeah, just, you know, trust it, make, trust your gut, and, um, you know, just nudge, nudge you when I can, but. Um, but I'm not going to, like, break anything by going with you instead, right? No, not, I don't think so, no. <laughs> All right, cool. You're way cooler than those guys, anyway. Like this Silverheart guy, man. He was just slaughtering people. It's like, wow. Yeah, they're they're uh they're a little intense. Um, yeah. But I, they 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 could be a force for good. I mean, the the power is in there. It's just finding somebody who can get them to use it that way yeah I don't I don't know maybe maybe I mean sometimes it feels like Kinley might be on that path but I don't know but I guess we'll just have to like play it by the ears I don't have hmm. but okay cool I just wanted to like check in and make sure that you know I wasn't just you know taking a hard ride off into like nowheresville no no you I just just it's a destiny thing you just gotta trust it you gotta trust your gut and uh, let it let it lead you where it needs to kind of thing you know that's uh cool Hey, by the way, can you, like, when you see us, can you do that to, like, anybody? Um, kind of. It, it's a lot easier with you guys, because we, like, have done this a few times now. Um, with, like, random people, it's a little bit tougher, but you can give it a try. Is there somebody in particular you need us to keep an eye on? Well, I just, you know, I've got, she's not on this continent, so I don't know if that makes it harder. It would kind of divide our focus a little bit, if we're looking that far away. I, I'm sure she's fine. It's not like that's dangerous out there or anything like that. I just, I just kind of miss her, so. Mm. Can try to take a peek, if you, uh promise not to do anything too crazy for a <laughs> while we, we can go and maybe see I, I don't know how much I can promise that we're probably going to find another pillar tomorrow so <laughs> we're, we're actually at the well so hopefully we'll be able to figure out where the, the pillar is and then you know but uh yeah no it's, it's fine I've got I, I can send like Stony Express messages and I have a bunch of letters that I can't really send out because there's no way out of the dome other than, you know, under the water and through a bunch of mazes and stuff, so it's yeah, just... What, what is with... You mentioned there was a hole. Why is there a hole in the dome? Yeah, I don't know. It looked like it. there was just, like, this interruption of the dome, but it's down, like, when you go into the well at Soga, and then you go down into the water, and it's, like, really deep and then there's like sponge and there's all these tunnels and these tunnels go through all these places and there's all these rooms and like we used uh i changed the color of the water to follow the the path of the water currents 
And after like two hours, we finally found the edge of the dome. And then there's even more maze on the other side. And it was like, there's no way anybody else is going to find that. Especially not without knowing that there's something to look for. Yeah, I'm kind of impressed that you guys managed. It sounds like it was really hard to, like, way yeah, off we, in the middle of nowhere. We kind of thought that the, the weeping well pillar would might have been at the soga well because we don't really we didn't really know what we were looking for before we found this book so we were looking for a pillar mm -hmm. hopefully nobody else does that too but yeah it's been kind of crazy in here yeah it's it's it looked like it uh i don't know i I'm hoping we get to uh, start helping soon, and I feel like you, you guys could use it, but... Yeah. I mean, you're helping me. Trying to, anyway. <laughs> anyway, we should probably get back. Yeah. Any, anyone else have... Side chats, chit chats, questions, comments, concerns, ideas, nope. schemes, plots. Nope. No, I think I'm good. <clears throat> okay. I'd, I'd probably just run over to Luce and be like, look what she just showed me how to do. <laughs> no, she just smiling and looking at but sorry, showing him like such a proud, proud child. <laughs> kind of heartwarming a little bit. She, she wanna admit that, but she thinks it. <laughs> okay, so they kind of wrap up for the evening, getting ready to send you back, and um, right as you kind of feel yourself drifting away from the like angelic plane or, or whatever you hear Ambriel whistle and one of the dogs comes bounding at Shelly and like leaps into your arms <gasps> make an arcana check Ooh. Ooh. that's a damn good arcana Nice. And scroll back. Scroll. Okay. Um, so you fade out and you wake up in bed in the morning and um, the dog is not there. Aw. No doggy. Look for tattoos. Look oh, for tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she took a shot at seeing if she could get one out with you, but it didn't seem like it worked. No. Oh, cool. we gotta have a puppy companion. Zara is gonna wake up in a great mood. <clears throat> so you wake up the next day feeling refreshed a little concerned about how much they were concerned but otherwise you know feeling like you're making good good progress good strides they were looking healthy ish healthier it feels like a good sign um, sorry concerned he he's a rune wizard now he's good <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> wow And, uh, yeah, so that's what you got for your evening. So, Zara's gonna head out of his room, head over to Kinley's door, and knock on it. Kinley! Kinley! Uh, what? Kinley. Wake up! Uh, Kinley! He's having a weird Kinley. dream. <laughs> what? Time to get up! <sighs> Get myself up and head out. 
then he's gonna do the same to everyone else's door. Just walk it up. Lucy. The first time Lucy. you knock, Lucy's gonna open the door. Just looks at you. Well, look who's up early in the morning. Good morning. He just glances at Sar. Finnegan. Finnegan. How many? How? Are you doing that to the whole group? Yes. Why? Is there somewhere you need to be? No, but um, we should have breakfast and we should start taking a look around and find that what we're looking for. Taking a little dive? <laughs> I kind of, you know, I saw your, your lantern last night. Oh, oh, did you? Did, did you do your lantern yet? No. No, I kind of wanted to do that before we, before we go. Yeah, it was really nice. You know what? I suggest you do it at night because it looks awesome at night glowing on the water. I mean, it looked pretty cool from down below. So, I can but, see that. But again, going to push through the crowd as they're standing in front of my door. And just, <laughs> like, they could totally ignore them and move on to go getting food because, nah. Yeah, just Finnegan, wait for me to go diving, all right? I want to swing by the temple first. Oh, sweet mother of God. I can't what? promise anything if you take too long. Cool. You know how impatient he gets. I'll get breakfast to go. Breakfast time. Do you want to swing by back by the temple with me? Do huh. I? Well, more Zara, but anybody else who wants to go. Oh, uh, I was like, uh, yeah, I'll pass. Uh, I'll go with you and uh, show you what I did. Um, um, well, you, you know what I did because I followed the directions, but um, it seemed to work out really well. So um, I'll show you where I sat and folded the lantern and um, show you the things that I noticed, which you may notice more today because, you know, it's not dark and everything. Just, just a quick question. How much coffee have you had this morning? None. I just feel really good this morning. And what the yeah. hell are you talking about? That's fair. I guess the, we'll see. <laughs> the, the lantern ritual. Well, the holy site here. She has not a clue, so... Well, we filled you in on the pilgrimage yeah. and having to do the rituals at the holy sites and all of that stuff, so... Uh, she was probably half listening and half... Storming Fuming. off, so have, have <laughs> seething with anger. anger. All right, I will fill Kinley in about everything over breakfast again. And if I see her attention wandering, I'm gonna poke her so well, that she's paying attention. Oh, now she's listening, so okay. Oh, interesting. All right, so we, we should all do that. Um, I already did my lantern, but um. Everyone else should do this as well, and uh, we'll start the day off with that. Oh, by the way, when we do go, uh, you know, there's apparently some big monster that lives in the lake. So we might want to go with just more than just me and Finnegan, just in case. Uh, well, unless you guys happen to breathe underwater with I, I don't know how I can help you out there. I mean, yeah, Finnegan can. I do not think I can breathe underwater, but if you want me to go for a swim, <laughs> um, then again, can help you breathe underwater. Uh, so about um, how deep is it? I mean, I don't know because I couldn't see. It was dark. <laughs> how, long did me. It, how long did it take me to swim down to the bottom? Um. I'll do some quick math. <laughs> math. You felt like depth-wise, it wasn't as deep as the well at Soga was. It was only maybe like 150, 200 feet to get down to the bottom. Oh, uh, that's not too bad. Yeah. No, please. And, and nowhere, nowhere near the kind of like <laughs> vast, vast nothingness of the well. Zara just turns pale. Are you scared of depth? Czar? Wait, do you know I how mean, to swim? Listen, drowning. Yes, I know how. Yes, I know, yes, I know how to swim. It just, I'm, I'm not a big fan of deep water. 
How about I join you too, and Zar can make us three lanterns? No, no, you make your own lantern. That's what I mean. No, I, I definitely no, no. want to do the do the ritual myself. If, if I can get, uh, if you have a way for me to go, I'll go. I don't like it, but I, I think yeah. if you do find some. I mean, I'd have to go anyway to you know set the alarm. So, um. There's oh, no it's... guarantee that it's down in the water, Gus. There's, just, there's, there's not, a... but, if it, but if it is, and we're already there, we could do it then and not have to worry about it. I mean, I'll stick with you. Shelly, what if this monster's actually protecting the barrier? Hmm. Could be. Did you do well, the thing with the, the speaking to animals thing? I mean... I haven't seen the animal to try. I mean, it's up to it whether you want to I mean, talk like, to me or you not. Have to spell. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. I can't do that yet. All right. Yeah. So it's okay. It's a it's a druid thing right now. <laughs> so, so I guess the plan is we'll we'll go to the temple. Then Finnegan will make us all be able to breathe underwater, and then we'll go check this out. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. All right. To the temple. <laughs> so you, you finish up breakfast and make your way over to the temple area again. You can do the same investigation plus religion roles that Zar did uh, while kind of observing the inside of the temple. You can see that it's now um, a little more it's a little busier. It's still early in the morning, but there's a few people getting in their like morning jogs through the park and um, kind of mm -hmm. sitting out, having their breakfast, enjoying the view and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to do a detect magic sweep and look out for any sort of writing that I might be able to get a... Yeah, I, I was going to say, since I, I saw some places last night, I, I would be taking a closer look today, too. Okay, you can you can roll another set um, at advantage this time since you had, and we'll kind of stack stuff on top. So. All right. Yay. Oh. Oh. Um. So with what you managed to observe the night before, plus follow up observations now. And Shelly and Lucy assisting, like the three of you all do, kind of going through these steps of observing the, the temple and kind of soaking it in and, and processing it as a place of religious significance to a faith. You um, collectively start noticing different bits and pieces of things. Nothing's really intact in a significant way. Like you're not finding full frescoes on the wall or anything of that sort unfortunately um, given the present condition of things but there's enough there between the three of you and Zar pointing out what he saw last night and building off of that that you get a good sense that this was a um, that this was a temple that was predominantly focused on uh, worship of Donna and swans down. Okay. Um, out of the six, like that was those what, were two, the like temple? the two focused, um, like the the two sort of focal points of the temple were the two of them. It it is they're all devoted to the six collectively, but there's sort of each one has more of a um, like focal point of diff different members of the the six. Okay. And yeah, you get like definite water el water element vibes throughout some of the architecture in terms of there's a lot of um, there's like a whole gutter system that looks like on a on a good rainy day the water would sort of flow through it in an ornamental fashion. Um, it would almost like a tile mosaic, but made out of little gutters that the water would flow through and sort of make up this elaborate pattern 
we're like right next to the water, right? Yes. So I'm going to like use shape water and just kind of bring some over to splash into it just to kind of make it look cool. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> um, so you, you fill it in. There's some pieces, there's some bits and pieces where <laughs> the stone's been like chipped and cracked and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it kind of leaks a little, but you can see it sort of fill this out. And um, the word I was grasping for was a, like a mandala sort of mm -hmm. shape. Um, so it sort of fills out through that and sort of flows around and then out the other side and just sort of runs off into the surrounding grass. But for that, um, you know, minute or two that you were shaped water into it, you, could, you really got to see it kind of come alive for a minute or two and then it just sort of runs off into the grass. Just All, right. All right, let's make some lanterns. Right. So. <laughs> It took me a while to figure out last night, but this is how I made my lantern, and I would demonstrate for everybody how I make shifted my lantern together. Lucy would pay close attention as to not fuck it up. <laughs> so you walk through it step by step. It's not an overly complicated arts and craft project. Uh, so it you know it, it takes you a, a few minutes and you kind of work through it and get it assembled. Is everyone doing this or? Yeah. Uh, Lucia will attempt. Uh, but again, it's not there. <laughs> Mostly because it seems necessary, not because of the whole religious <laughs> thing. Okay. It's, instead of lighting a candle, I'm just gonna cast light on mine. Oh. Sure. Um. So the four out of the five of you, because I'm sorry, were you doing this a second time? Yeah, I'll do it a second time since uh, I was demonstrating. Why not? Okay. So four out of the five of you do this. Three out of the five of you with some semblance of religious intent-ish? Or are you kind of going through the motions too, Lucy? Oh, she got to be careful about that. <laughs> um... Probably can't help it, but mostly repeating the motions. Okay. But being um, careful. Just kind of walking on eggs there. <laughs> just remember, as, as a paladin, just because you worship one god, you don't have to forsake or not believe in other gods. It, it's a balance that you have to find yeah. for yourself. Um, so, you... Anyone who's doing the lantern does the lantern, and those who are doing it with religious intent do so, and everyone else is just kind of like, eh, I made a lantern, float it in the water. <laughs> they they float, float out onto the lake a little bit, out towards the center, and, and just kind of drift off very sort of peacefully. And the surface of the water, despite the steady stream coming off of the well and the, the current that the, the lake and the surrounding rivers have, the surface of the water is relatively serene, so it just kind of like gently floats about on that um, surrounding currents. And yeah, there you go. Two. Did you did you leave him any notes this time? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I just left a heart on mine. Oh. Hey, thinking of you. <laughs> Yes, I put a um, um, a pillar homing room on my lantern so it would take us directly to where we need to go. Good plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we should probably go find Finnegan before he jumps in the river and gets eaten by a dinosaur. S sneak that uh, find the path rune out of one of the books and. Mm -hmm. like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should probably go um, see where our druidic friend has got. Himself. So, a question about the layout of this. Where, where this temple's located, you said there's kind of like a stone ramp that leads down into the water. Does this stone ramp lead down into the water directly toward the fountain? Yes, it, it faces into the lake. Um, it, like the It's sort of like there's the open space and that sort of half ramp, half sort of staircase up into the edge of the water so that you'd have ready access to float your lanterns out. Uh, but it is directly facing the well. Like, the, the temple itself is like a big... It, it's open, but think of it like a giant bay window overlooking the well yeah. on the middle of the lake kind of a view. 
I would point that out that the ramp into the water leads directly to the well, to uh, Shelley and Kenley and uh, Lucy. Interesting. Take a look while we, you guys try to find Finnegan. What? I mean, I could just like walk down there. I can right. barely no, hear no. you. I said why. What? Sorry. Don't, don't go by yourself. Well, no, I, I don't mean like far, just to take a look to see if there's anything I could see right away. Don't, don't get eaten. <laughs> don't get eaten. Well, let's, uh, let's go find the person that always seems to put all of our plans on hold because he's never with the group, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, so you did do a detect magic scan of the general temple area. You yeah. didn't see anything jumping out at you as having a magical aura. You can tell that while it hasn't been, like, desecrated, the temples at this point is largely no longer consecrated just from lack of faith and lack of upkeep. It's kind of lost all of its magical juice um, okay. as far as being, like, a religious structure. Juice! <gasps> that works, right? Smack it with the staff, see what happens. Chica, juice! <laughs> and someday you really are going to hit something with that, and it will be a, a very interesting day indeed. Technically, I've hit a lot of people with it, but it was Shillelagh style, so it doesn't yeah. count. Doesn't count. <laughs> but, someday. Anyway, uh, nah. so you go off to find Finnegan. <laughs> Finnegan, what are you getting yourself up to? Are you letting them find you, or are you just diving into the water for, like, screw you guys, I'm going home? Like, what are you doing? I mean, I'll be in the water, but I'm not going to go down. I'm actually going to swim out to the, the actual pillar pillar in the middle, mm -hmm. and I'm going to see if there's any, like, inscriptions or anything special about the pillar itself. Okay, so you're just swimming out in normal Finnegan shape? Yeah. Okay. Pit a paddle in the middle of the lake. <laughs> well, I guess we'll be walking around and just randomly seeing somebody swimming in the middle of the, the lake. I mean, I probably definitely saw you guys sit off the lanterns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Wait. you at least kind of have like a vague. Wait, it, didn't you tell me that there's an old man that doesn't let children swim in the water? What's that little kid doing out there swimming toward the <laughs> um, maybe we found Finnegan. He does look like a little kid. <sighs> so, you swim up to the island. <laughs> you see that, uh, like, there's, because of the way the water sort of cascades <laughs> off the edge of it, there's sort of a gap between where the water meets the, the surface of the lake and the inner part of the pillar that the well sort of sits on. Mm -hmm. And so once you swim up to that, you can see that on sort of the corners in between where the four streams of water come off, there are ladder type structures built into the surface of the pillar itself, like a recessed ladder, essentially made out of stone rungs. So you're saying <laughs> Finnegan takes this ladder upwards. <laughs> That's not what I said, but that's what you said. Oh, see, you, you, you said, hey, hey, there's something you can actually climb on. Yeah. <laughs> I climb it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't wait for people. Why would you do something like that? It's uh, funny. I'm just climbing up on stone. It's nothing yeah, terrible. Yeah, so it's fine. <laughs> I'll, as I'm climbing up, if I see him, I'm, I'll definitely wave at him. Mm -hmm. uh, From underneath the waterfall? I thought it was at the corners in between the waterfalls corners in between the waterfalls but you're still you're still sort of like recessed in obscured by the edge of the pat like you're in this kind of a thing sort of deal okay. so the ladder's gonna go like that. Right, right. when i when i get towards like the topper side or something if, whenever i can see them while i'm climbing obviously it doesn't have to be right away if i see them i'll go like oh hey guys uh is he how is he going up there like a spider climb don't you worry I guess we're gonna have to hurry. I'm on a boat. 
So you climb up the ladder. You can. Uh, <laughs> it's a decently high climb. Just roll a basic athletics check for me, because you do have to do a bit of like a monkey bar action to get out to the edge and up around to the top. But I'm assuming you want to go all the way to the top of the platform. Yeah, I could get a good, you know, look around town, <laughs> see what's inside the well, you know, obviously. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, nothing nothing uh, dangerously solo partying at all. Mm -hmm. You fall and then end up with a bruise on your back because you did a flat. <sighs> that would be hilariously funny for the group. <laughs> you can feel feel free to, to jump off and belly flop if you want to. You'll oh, just take a that's... few few d6 of damage <laughs> just, just a couple um anyway Ow. you reach the top of this platform and you see what looks like a very simple <coughs> well like just on fairly, a really big platform yeah like it seems fairly nondescript it's just a, a decent a bit wider than most wells that you would see in a town but aside from that it seems very kind of like a normal well but there's four distinct steady streams of water coming out of the top of the well where you would normally expect to put a bucket in and mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. flowing very neat and orderly off the four sides like, is there any descriptive in stone around that the water's flowing through or is in between? Any kind of, like, descriptive on the stone that the well's sitting on? Or is it just straight smooth? Uh, you mean in terms of, like, troughs or gutters or any of that kind of stuff? Or... Like, any, like anything other than smooth stone from where the water is. Is there anything else on the... Like uh, markings, top rooms. top surface. I got you. I got you. It, does, Go it doesn't even have to be ruins. It's literally just anything that stands out besides water flowing. Sure. Uh, it, make it, it could be like a stone button, possibly that yeah. leads a, down a no. lever or a switch of some kind. Go yeah, ahead, yeah. Make an check for your poking around on the top there. Meanwhile, okay. Lucy's taking off her armor for going for a swim. <laughs> That helps so, you get down faster, Lucy. Yeah, you you go and kind of poke around a bit, and um, you see, just because it's so rare for anyone to come up here, that the iconography isn't as scrubbed clean. Well, you didn't go to the temple, so you wouldn't have that frame of reference. Um, but there is still visible <laughs> iconography up here around, like, the outer perimeter of the well itself and then also on the flat top that you're standing on you can see some um, carvings that look almost like a mural just kind of depicting the six at, at, yeah, at battle with the, the queen and her generals okay mm. well I'm just going to sit up there on top of the ladder and just wait for my party to come join me before I jump into the well. <laughs> or go closer to the well so it's fall accidentally fall into well. <clears throat> Why don't you just go jumping headlong in by yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, thought about it. It's not like the uh, water breathing was going to help keep most of them from drowning on the way out to the well or anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, can they not swim? <laughs> Lucy can swim. But if they Sorry. get dragged under by something or. <sighs> nah, it's fine. Finnegan was just thinking of himself only you know, again. I'm, I'm, you... assu I'm assuming that they're capable keepers that can swim. They recently ate breakfast. They might not have waited a half hour. These things happen Cramps. sometimes. Yeah. They wa to walk fr from our hotel here and do their rituals, definitely 30 minutes. Yeah, well. Um. So, so the rest gonna of wait guys are going to sw swim your way out to the center where you, s you saw Finnegan kind of sitting there looking smug up on top of the the pillar that the well sits on. Wow. Sora's going to wait until Shelly comes back out of the water. Because <laughs> she went to go walk down that ramp and look around. 
-hmm. No, you guys said to go look for Finnegan first, so. Oh, oh, I thought you went ahead. I'm and with you guys. That while we went. Okay, okay. Well, well, I guess meanwhile Lucy's just making sure she puts the armor in the bag. She's gonna take off her cloak, <laughs> also, and then like ready to go. As you guys are like climbing up here, I'm like, hey guys, <laughs> just like talking down to you guys. Hey guys, there's drawings of 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 the angels and stuff versus the versus the demons and the general. It's really cool. It's, it's yeah. really cool. St guys, you gotta hurry up. There's cool stuff up here. Czar is going to uh, kind of <clears throat> like take his boots off and uh, ask Shelly if he could put it in their bag. <laughs> sure. Well, nothing's worse than wet shoes. Um. How you get blisters? That's why I don't wear any. <laughs> you know, and, and, and some, like his shirt and stuff like that too. But um, he's gonna leave his cloak on, with the hood up, as he swims out because it's always in his mind that someone's always trying to watch him, mm -hmm. especially after that last message. So any advantage he has, kind of like on them not seeing him do something, the better. And so Shelly's going to cloak. swim, like five feet under the surface. And make sure that they stay behind the rest of them to make sure that they're okay. But also keeping an eye down below to make sure nothing's going to come up underneath us. Okay. <laughs> Shelly. Hmm? Um, do you mind if I hold on to your shell while we swim out to you? I, I knew it. He can't swim. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. No, no he can. He, he's I just don't... really scared of water. I mean, I guess that's all right. So I'll just stay at the surface, but keep my face down to look Thank down. You. So I can hold my breath for an hour, so yeah. I don't have to, like, do the thing. But... Give, give uh, two, two knocks when you get close to the pillar so you don't headbutt it by accident. Yeah. Yep, we'll do. <laughs> um, pillar? I so, thought this was a well. Well, the Wait. pillar that the well sits on. She gave it away, guys. It's the a pillar. <laughs> Damn it, you caught me. Got her. Got her. We totally didn't what? know there was a pillar here after she described, you know, the battle with the demon queen. Well, yeah. it's technically a pillar goes up to the well, so... Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or it could tending... just be a different shaped, you know, to where it's just a column base instead of spherical base. <gasps> Maybe well, they're all different shapes. <gasps> like, uh, uh, well, like, in the, like inside the volcano, it's, a tri it's like a pyramid shape inside of the... Oh. Well, maybe if we let the Dungeon Master talk, we'll find out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting amused by the faces he was making. With I'm just, I'm just remaking it for her. She's writing these notes down. Don't you worry. Yeah. It's like, sure. That one was a sphere. This one will be a cylinder. That one's a pyramid. I'm, a, I'm on board with that. Why not? Um, <laughs> as long as it's got a, as long as it's lead and has an inside surface with magical runes on it, anything else, all bets are off. So, um, you know, plus uh, things and stuff. And, yeah. you know, just just because one of them was just buried under the ground very lazily doesn't mean that all of them are. Maybe some of them. I look into the sky. Have other kinds uh. of protection around them and things and stuff and stuff and things. You know, extra challenge. Yeah, yeah like right. to find them. possible guarding of said pillar yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um you know traps and puzzles and all kinds of fun stuff these are just things that could hypothetically be there yes we blew right past it by a lot <laughs> by three uh, what break <laughs> i mean yeah, technically we could still take one yeah I, I thought about it but i was like at this point we're already like <laughs> <sighs> We were already over it. Unless we were going to go long again, and you want to take a 10 minute break. It's, it's fine for me to go long again if everybody else is fine. Yeah. If fine. we are, I definitely need another soda, though, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. break would be good. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll... Let, let's, um, let's get you up on top of the column with Finnegan, and then we'll take the break there. Does that sound good? Right. good? Sounds good. Okay. All right. So you <coughs> s swim across the water. Go ahead and make a perception check for me, Shelly, because you're keeping an eye on the undersurface. There's a creature 20 feet from you, just at all times, staring at you. <laughs> uh, has a humanoid face. Uh, <laughs> Looks just like you. It's a magical Leopleridon. 
to mimic. It is not a magical Leopluridon. <laughs> but it was going to show us our way to Candy Mountain. <laughs> oh, no. You were very much going to wake up with one kidney if you keep this up. <laughs> I stole your freaking kidney. Oh this my is God, my we love our dungeon master. She gets all of our weird references. Yep, I do my best. Um... <laughs> So you, why did I go away from that? Where did I go? There we go. Um, so you're keeping a, a steady eye underneath you. You reach the column. You reach the column. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I did it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you reach the column. You reach the ladder. Lucy starts climbing up first. Czar. Uh, Kinley f follows up. Zar hops off your shell, climbs up. You <laughs> didn't notice anything in the water. Like, you you were keeping a close eye peel for it because you know that Finnegan had mentioned it, but you didn't catch a sight of any, like, shadowy bodies moving around underneath you. You do, um, as you get close to one of the waterfalls of water, you do get a very familiar, but extremely subtle salt water taste. <laughs> Can I do detect magic? Just to see. Sure. <gasps> They're all linked. I mean, didn't we already know that? That there was a connection between the Weeping Well and the Well at Soga? I mean, people assumed. Could be just the angel manifesting uh, herself. May, maybe someone peed in the water and that's why it's salty. Ah, <laughs> uh, question. So you do detect magic down at the surface of the the water, <laughs> and kind of take a look at one side, take a look at another side, kind of look it up the ladder, look it up at the top as much as the gunner hangs, you can see, and stuff as it's outside of the thirty foot range, the very top. Um, and it seems to be just a stone tower, as far as you can reckon, um, from this angle and location. Okay. And like, I want to like stick my hand out under the the waterfall and give it a little taste, and give it a little taste on that one. Mhm. Mm and I, I didn't. You're... And I, I didn't pick up any of this when I was down swimming, correct? Uh. I mean, you probably aren't tasting it while you're swimming as a person. Well, I was a reef shark the night before. Oh, well, yeah, with the perception check that you rolled, I I was focused on trying to hint at the... Monster. The what? Oh, there's a... See, she admitted it, guys. There is a monster. Yeah. <laughs> Should you give away all the secrets? I give away all the secrets. Um, but yeah, you probably would have picked up that faint salt taste it dissipates extremely fast like the water is considered fresh water as far as anyone else is concerned like the, all of this surrounding rivers and things that it feeds out to is considered fresh water it's drinkable it doesn't it, people don't reject it like salt water um so that it's just the water between like coming out of the well before it hits the surface of the lake that it has that faint salt taste, and then it dissipates out into the rest of the body of water. Okay. Uh, so is it both the waterfalls on this side? Yeah, you would get it from both. And it's it doesn't taste like actual like ocean salt water. It's just very faint. Yeah, it's that it's that same super super faint salt taste that you picked up at the super deep part of the well. You got that faint salt through the bubble. Okay. It's it's that kind of level. Like it's there enough that you know that there's salt in it, but it's basically imperceptible. If you hadn't already tasted it once before, you would have eat, potentially missed it. Okay. Hmm. Lucy's so. climbing to the top. Um, <laughs> yep. So everybody climbs up. Um, just athletic checks for me for the monkey bars part. Oh boy. Fail, 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 fail. I shot it. Not you. Oh, not 20. You, you pick someone up and carry them with you. <laughs> Got it. Lucy well, does that thing where she does up. like the, the totally reverse failing. hand thing where she just tosses her body up the top. <laughs> can, I, 
Perfect. Wait, how far is Kelly down the cockpit? The way Lucy does it is she just like swims her feet up hard enough to where she just pops out of the water 100 feet and lands on them. That's how it works. Didn't even, yeah. didn't even no. try climbing. <laughs> the, the like dolphin kick? Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So you get to, uh, you're go climbing up this ladder. Lucy was up first. Kinley was second. Zar was next. Shelly was coming up last. Um, so Kinley is into the monkey bar section. Lucy, at, you're like turning around to go up around the top lip and you see Kinley's hands start to slip off. So you uh, can, can I catch her? Make an athletics or an acrobatics to try to catch Kinley. Uh, a 12. Do I catch Kinley with a 12? Huh? Yes, you do. Yay! I save you. So, Kinley, thank you. Can't slip off, and you, you're like one one hand on the rail because you, you rolled a, a natural twenty on your athletics check. So one, <laughs> one hand on the bar, one hand reaches underneath, and Kinley clasps you on the like the wrist. Got like this kind of a lock thing going on. And you're just like, uh, that was a close one. I mean, uh, sort of. She... Ugh, or back either, up on the bars. <laughs> either swing her back to the ladder, or just like have her prop. <laughs> Hold on to her and finish climbing. Swing her. No. <laughs> no. Probably finish climbing with her. Like, ripping on her. <laughs> you, you work your, your way around. Everyone else follows up behind. You know, acknowledging the good catch. And now you are all on the top of this platform. And we'll go ahead and take our usual 10 minute break a bit later yeah. than normal. And then uh, we'll keep going. Yay! Sounds right. good. I'm excited. Yeah. All right, so ten minute break. All we shall return. We Enjoy shall... the three minutes of ads. We shall see you all soon.
Ready. Even Whiskit's ready. And we're back, everybody. Hi. Hey. Welcome, Welcome back. back. You sound so hyped. Hey. <laughs> we're ready to get going again. Yeah, on top of a well. I mean, the pillar. I mean... Uh, in a location... Far, <laughs> far away. To be named later. Um... Well, there's a weeping well. Well, yes. we are in Vinewood. <laughs> <laughs> so, so help me, I will change it again. And you will have to, you will have to learn it because it's canon, because I say it's canon. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so, yeah. So, where we were just before the break, everyone has climbed to the top of the weeping well. There was a close call, slip off the monkey bars. But... Lucy, with a quick grab on Kinley, managed to save the day, and everyone is successfully now on top. Where would you like to go? What would you like to do? What do you want to poke first? Well, Don't Lucy's gonna. Other. Lucy's gonna turn to Kinley and be like, "You should be a little more careful. I'm not gonna be there next time to catch you." It's not like I tried to fall. <laughs> she's she's gonna smile, like she was uh playing. I am taking in the uh, the artwork and seeing if I can find any uh, runes or anything like that up here that may help describe what we're supposed to do or what we're looking at. Also detect magic and looking for any wording. Okay. Um, investigation checks. And then for the detect magic, you detect a... Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the school would be because it's a magic item and magic items don't have schools because they're stupid. So it will help Czar look around. Well, if you tell us the item, we can help you come up with a, a, a magic class for it. Sure, oh, so sure. You're helping me, Kinley? Yes, I would help you. Alright. Lucy's walking about looking on the floor. Not Good thing you helped him. <laughs> I'm gonna use lucky. He was one too... <laughs> point of lucky. So let me use more than one point of lucky, guys. So let me, let me the you get one, and that's it. Hey, oh, Jesus. Hey, I think you should uh, not use a lucky. No. I hate. I hate this feat. I hate it. I hate it. It hates you, man. It really hates you. But it's written into my background, but, and I gotta keep it. But <laughs> hey, just because you're lucky to get here does not mean you're lucky now. I like that. Yeah, that's a cool site. I also use that place for the magic, for the travel calculator. Necromancy. That's, that's, a color, that's a color scheme. That doesn't... Necromancy. Necromancy. Oh. Necromancy. Oh, no. I'm a, I'm a patron, so if I put in a, yeah, so an am I. item, so am I. Tell me it yeah. It, oh. it, was, it was worth paying for that one. Oh, well, I mean, that actually sounds kind of cool. I might have to give that a look, because that would be helpful. Because some oh. of the magic items are just like, I have no idea what the... Well, it's supposed to. It didn't work just now. Yeah. Um... Well, I would say it's probably giving off... Um... Abjuration vibes. And... That's probably what I would expect. Is it coming from the well itself, or...? Uh, from, like, the top of, like, not the... The, the lid, the lid not, of it. Yeah, like, the lid of it. We're standing on the lid. No, like... You're, you're talking about the top like of where the, the well. Like, where the water's coming out? Yes, where the water is coming out of the well. So you're on you're on like a platform, and in the middle of the platform is like a cylinder that comes up a few feet where the water is explicitly coming out of, and that the like top slice of that is where this ore is coming from, mm -hmm. and then it's like covered by a little roof. Um, please tell me that there. <laughs> Can I stick my finger in the water? Down, down the hole. Can I put my finger in the hole? You, uh, if you walk up to it, you can see where the aura is coming from. There is a grate 
over the top of the the very top of the well. Oh, no trespassers because of a grate. Can I taste it? Is it salty? Mm -hmm. Not substantially so. Paint. Yeah. All right, being a blacksmith and all, I'll take a look at the grate, if it is actually made of some kind of metal, and see if there's a way for it to hinge open or be removed. Okay. Uh, Do we really uh, want to open that? Yeah, we want to get in there. Do we? We might find another black hole inside. It might find another stick that I could use. I could dual wield sticks. <laughs> I wouldn't give you another one. So go ahead and make a um, smith tools check. Should have purpose. Um, would be intelligence or wisdom as the skill with it. You can dial that in on the roll to one, on the D and D Beyond side of things. So that would be a plus four with my proficiency and my intelligence modifier. And I'm trying to type in <laughs> <laughs> roll 1d20 plus four into Twitch chat. <laughs> good good plan. That'll get you far. I mean, definitely nah, further than it. not. Okay. So you can... Um, you can have lucky. You do, technically. Don't have do it. You don't, shouldn't do it. If you do it, you get one. <laughs> Fuck me! What the <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. So? You have the worst lucky luck. No, te technically, that is phenomenal luck if you can right, constantly get the same number. There every we go. Every single okay, time. There, so I blew them all. Lucky, lucky for the day is blown. Um, but you can tell that this great appears to be um it looks like adamantine but it's just different somehow there it's um it's an alloy that you're not familiar with but okay. it appears to be adamantine yes. based okay and i don't see any way to open it or uh hinge it open or anything like that or no the the like rod sections of the grate extend into the top level of stone and it looks like it just recesses in and it's just a solid grate it doesn't look like it's meant to be uh, like a hatch or a hinge so I see two options I can sit here for a little bit and use some charcoal and get fishtachio and send her down and see if she can see anything or i can do a slightly more dangerous thing and you know that thing i did when we were running away from the general guy all right i i could do that into there oh Maybe. I mean, maybe not, because the, the magic might prevent, like, any but sort of movement. Get stuck. I, that's why it's dangerous. If you do the pistachio route, do you want me to check the creature down below while you're doing that? Tag team things we need to get done here? If you wanna. Creature down below? Is... Yeah, there's supposed to be a big monster in the lake. It's not nice to call it a monster until you know. I was just going to see if it wanted to chat. <clears throat> so we swam in water with possibly a monster <clears throat> beneath it? Mm. I mean, I thought I told you guys that, but... Wait, did she? Yeah. I don't remember you telling us. We both discussed that there's a monster in the well. Or... Okay, I'll remind that interaction then. <laughs> we could definitely remind Lucy. That's no problem. So... Are there any indentations up here or anything that looks like maybe an object would be a, a place where an object would be placed or anything like that up here? Um, not that you noticed. Um, okay. As the, the both of you have been like mostly kind of focused on the 
great at the top of this uh, between the detect magic, giving you the abjuration kind of vibe off of the, the grate itself, and then trying to see if there was like a hinge or a hatch or a latch or a catch or release or any of that kind of stuff. If you've been focused mainly on that. Um, as you sort of work your way around the stone on the outer edge and sort of the like underside of the roof and you're looking for things, um, Shelly, you do spot a yeah you do spot some archaic celestial on the underside of this roof and it is uh, when you translate it out to common it roughly interprets to the word backstage backstage mm -hmm. like in a theater Interesting. Exit so stage. I will, <clears throat> I will let them know that, and then I will change my earlier thought because I remembered that I do have one other thing I could do. And I am going to just sit there, touching it, and do a ri ritual uh, where I am casting Identify. And what I'll do is uh, on the grade itself to see if I can learn any more of the properties and what it actually does. Um, and it just kind of looks like she's there, like, praying. But. And while she's doing that, <clears throat> I would have taken out my blacksmithing hammer mm -hmm. and charged up the rune on it and touched it to the grate to see if it had any effect with celestial energy. Touching it. You're going to see if you can crack that shit open with celestial energy? No, no, energy? I'm not smacking it. I'm seeing if it reacts to the oh. rune. I was like, Jesus Christ, we're cracking open the dome. We're fucking done. <laughs> um, Earthquake. Okay, so Shelly's has their hand on the grate, casting identify on it. It takes ten minutes to ritual cast it. Eleven. Eleven minutes to ritual cast it. Um, because it's a minute plus ten. Gotcha. Um, so you're doing that for a while, and Czar kind of takes out the blacksmith hammer that he used to make his fancy new rapier, and kind of charges it up with the best amount of energy he can and just kind of doesn't full on bonk it but for all intents and purposes basically like bonks the grate with the hammer <coughs> to kind of see, if, see if the celestial it. energy vibes across it it um the celestial energy kind of reverberates through the grate a little bit, almost like a tuning fork action a little. Um, but it doesn't seem to <clears throat> disrupt it or displace it or release it or any of that kind of stuff. It just sort of harmonizes with the energy, I guess would be the way to phrase it. I may have just made it stronger. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, like Fix It Felix when he hits yeah. the prison bars and the prison bars like triple in thickness. He's like, dang yeah. it! <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, That's so my luck. you finish the identify and learn that this well great sewer great kind of protective cover that lets the water flow freely through it is essentially um, like a grate of immovable rods. Oh. You know how much I love this now? I and, want to acquire it and own it forever. <laughs> and immovable rods always have a button to release them. Maybe, unless Fine. it's celestial made. So you can see that the <coughs> the like lattice work of the grate now now that you know what it is and what it does, uh, the lattice work of the grate kind of gives you this vibe of like one immovable rod prevents you from moving the other prevents you from moving the other. Even if you <laughs> successfully strength test checked one the next one would keep it from moving which would keep it from moving which would keep like it compounds you you would never be able to strength tech check the grate out because one rod would interfere with the next interfere with the next interfere with the next so it's basically a that's oh. fair uh <clears throat> hmm. so This this could be like a password. 
or it could be an indication that we need to go look for a way in in a theater or something like that. But would there even be any theaters that are still around old enough to do that? Well, maybe I sort of glance over toward the old temple, an old amphitheater temple type structure. Yeah. I mean, is there a backstage of an amphitheater? Yeah, the <clears> backstage <throat> is where the actors usually hang out before they come on stage. Yeah, and but like amphitheaters are usually open where you don't have a... There's always the, the side that amphitheaters usually still have entrances. It's just not as easily accessible. I mean, that would make more sense than an actual theater. But... Uh... Well, maybe. What did you say that writing was again, Shelly? Backstage? Yeah, yeah. Where, where did you say it was on the... Thing? Oh, it's up It's up here under the... Yeah, it's on the under underside of the roof. I'm gonna like, look on the that. other side of it. <laughs> Just because. So you're gonna, like, climb up on the top of the well to look at the top of the roof? That after I go to the other side of where this is written, like directly opposite on the other side of the well under the roof there and see if there's like a button or something there. Or is that not how this is positioned? Is there like, is, is it an open covering up here or is there still something going through the center? No, it's um, so you're you're on the platform that your feet are on, right? Mm -hmm. right. In the middle, middle of that platform is a cylinder that's the physical well, that mm -hmm. it com comes up to like, yeah, like hip height, where the water's uh -huh. spilling out and the grate is, and then there's like four vertical columns that connect to a little roof okay. that sits over the grate, and on the underside of that is where the word was. Okay. Oh, like smack dab in the middle? Yeah. Well, I thought something would be on the roof of this. Um, you want me to lift you up to see? <laughs> no, no. I want to reach my hand down into the well, if, if there's enough room for my hand to fit in between the bars, and feel along the sides of the well in between them and see if I can feel a button or a switch or something on the inside. So kind um, of like on the back side of the well. Go for a sleight of hand check. Oh, I'm actually good at those. I think. To see if you can, like, fit your hand in without it getting st stuck. Like, uh, sticking your hand into, like, a cookie jar and your hand gets stuck in a cookie jar kind of an action. How about a 25? So, <laughs> your, your hand doesn't get stuck. You kind of reach in and you just sort of feel around on the inner edge as it you're kind of feeling through the water as it's like gushing out over the top of the well trying to make sure that you don't accidentally get swept away by it and run your hand along you don't seem to feel any sort of depressions or anything that would you'd be would be pushable or no buttons or switches or anything okay. of that sort just wanted to try everything i could think of Would have been would have been real fun if you crit filled that and you're just like your hand goes in and your hand doesn't seem to come back out. <laughs> Shelly, dis dis dislocate a thumb and try to. Oh, terrible. that would be some karma. Put put some butter <laughs> on there and hope for the best. That that would be some karma for Czar having to dislocate his own thumb. Mm-hmm. That always makes me think of that fucking Gerald's game book. Oh God. Stephen King. <sighs> well, um. We really so, didn't notice anything in the temple, though. You know, uh, that bard guy that I talked to that told us about the well at Soga? Right. He mentioned... Find my notes, because I was just looking at it. He mentioned that one of the cool places that I should definitely look at on my trip through the country would be one of the temples here. Or not temples, the, the theaters. Maybe. There it is. Let's see. Oh, he just said theater in Vinewood. That's just super helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I thought 
I thought my I notes which... were actually going to be worth something for once. <laughs> I know exactly which theater you're talking well, about, Shelly. Right? Because, I mean, looking at this map, there are a lot of theaters. So... Well, I mean... It would have to be something really old. So... Yeah. As old um, as the well? See that? Look at that. Theater in Vinewood. That's all it says. Hmm. There is one called an aqua theater. Yeah, that's, that caught my eye. <laughs> There's an amphitheater, in Dome theater. So the problem is, how do we figure it out, one, without f tipping our hands, and two, quickly enough that we don't get fucking bored and just decide to teleport into it? This is <laughs> this is the capital, right? Yes, yes, this is the capital of the Valley of Inspiration, the Kingdom of the Valley of Inspiration. Well, if, if we if need you... information, Sar knows a way we can get it. He can pay a visit to the uh, city council, the country council, or whatever. If you knew it was aberration, then you know it would have protection. So you and would you not assume that it would prevent Misty Sep? being effective though? I mean that's what I thought until I found out that they were immovable rods that you know of there could be more besides the immovable rods and considering considering this council was one of the councils that were on that hollow call back in the druid nation they they would be probably more than apt to be completely forthcoming with any information when I showed up asking for it rather than trying to be subversive about it. Yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, for one, who's to say that they would know anything? I they, mean, would know, they would know how old the buildings are here. Sure, but I mean, I think we could figure that out just by looking at them. We... But the other problem is that there was a cultist on the council in the other place, so who's to say that there isn't one here too? Hmm. That that's true, but if we're always suspecting everyone at all times, where are we ever going to get assistance? Isn't I mean, for all we know, one of the other keepers was a cultist that we've talked to. Mm. So should we stay away from other keepers as well? No. Uh, Silverheart, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'll well, deal with Silverheart. Well, certain people should stay away from Silverheart. <laughs> so I shall deal with him in due time. Shouldn't we try to a lot of a lot of assumptions have been made about Silverheart? I'll deal with him like you can or something. I I think it's safest if we keep all this between us for now. Unless oh. people show themselves to be helpful and useful like Cleo did. What about her one of her sisters? Wouldn't one of her sisters be in this city? Probably not. Doubtful. She's well, Really close. We could hit it um, from two different angles. Yeah. Kinley and I could go to the council and just walk in all pompous as usual and demand access to all of their records. And I'm sure she could quickly find the information we need about the different theaters here. What if the backstage is saying that there's a back door, like under the water? Maybe well, you that's... and Finnegan could check that out. And we can hit it from two different angles, so maybe that's twice the chance that we'll find something. But if you do find something, get us, and we'll get you, and don't go off by yourself. We need to do it as a group. That whole sentence was counter. <laughs> We're going to split up, do your thing, but don't do it without us. No. I mean, he's saying find the entrance, but don't go in it because we're stronger together. I mean, I don't want to go in the entrance at all because if we go in the entrance, that means they can go in the entrance. Swimming nope. across the lake by yourself is just a recipe for getting eaten. Exactly. And if we find the entrance and it hasn't been disturbed, I can place the rune and we can move on. Sounds like a plan. Break. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> so, so, Kinley, you feeling up to uh, 
mustering through some old dusty tomes and record books. Always. Lucy, are you going swimming with us? Why not? Oh, do Tell you want your something. boots back, Zar? What? Your boots. <sighs> Here, we'll, yes. I'll give them to Kinley. Kinley's got a bag, too. Yes, yes. Um, j Just move my shirt and my boots into Kinley's bag. Could I perhaps give you the armor and my cloak to put in your bag so it does not soak, become soaking wet? Are you staying with us or going with them? I'll, I'll be swimming with you both. All right, I assumed that it was in my bag, so... Oh, yes, okay. you, I, I think you three have the more dangerous task with a monster swimming about the water than me and Kinley <laughs> do, unless... You know, there's ancient possessed tomes that are going to attack us, but I'm pretty sure that's no match for the torch in my pack. I will cast water breathing on all of us before we go down. <laughs> so now, K Kinley and Zar, you'd have no fear. You physically can breathe underwater, so no needs of water in general. <laughs> don't, don't waste your spells right now. It, don't worry, it lasts for 24 hours. Oh. Uh, all right, then. So, between now <laughs> and when you put your head on a pillow tonight, you can breathe underwater. Even if, tomorrow. If you get waterboarded or anything like that, you're good to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or, if you're doing waterboarding to someone else, uh, I mean, that's on to you. Uh, uh, let's go, Kinley. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 uh. So, uh, can we just, like, take a nice little run and just jump off feet first down into the water? <laughs> That's too high, um, dude. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I mean, how high is it? 50 uh, feet. It's, like, 50 feet up. It will feel, like, oh. feel like you will feel like you're hitting I, concrete. Uh, I, I've jumped off cliffs higher than that in real life, and it didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you can do a 50, but you're going to have to make roll. an acrobatics check. <laughs> To not oh. screw it up on the way down. Cut I've had a couple flat. good rolls tonight, and I've already <laughs> blown all of my lucky. So let's let's go down the normal way, I guess. However, you're gonna make an athletic maneuver like that, or an a you could do acrobatics or athletics to try to make a clean dive <laughs> and not you, accidentally belly well, flop. When you uh, fall I, into water from between 50 and 100 feet or above, it's like hitting concrete. Shelly, on the other hand, is going to take a running start, swan dive off, and you guys aren't going to see a splash. Watching I'll misty step into the because water. Because I'm going to misty step right underneath <laughs> of it. Of course. <laughs> That's pretty. Oh, good. Lucy will just go down the ladder. I, I, will, I will take a run and jump off and go in feet first to minimize contact with the water and for a nice clean mm -hmm. injury. Be be before you jump, I will advise you jumping along with the flowing water will be safer than yeah. jumping into a still part of the water. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. But you can, you can do how you want to jump. Uh, I'm going to jump with the waterfall. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, will, I will jump wherever a waterfall is. Okay. Ooh, she's going down the stairs. Uh, the ladder. Good I'm, plan, not gonna jump. I'm not going to jump on concrete. Yeah, don't jump on concrete. That's a bad plan. Uh, so acrobatics or athletics to make the dive. Luckily, you can all breathe underwater now, so when you get caught in the undertow of the, the roiling waterfall. Oh, there's decent That's, acrobatics. Unless it gets advantage. Of this. No, it's terrible. Yeah, it's really bad. Oh, I only saw the 19. My rolls are it's terrible today. Yep. Oh, rip. So. We just need to see if we have, what Finnegan got, and then we will educate. Successfully didn't die. <laughs> you get matters. munched. Hey, I didn't jump into the concrete. I'll take my. I'll take my <laughs> roll. If I land, if I did that roll, jumping into still water, five d six damage, no doubt. Yeah, into still water for sure. Um, into moving water. Oh, 
health. That's actually pretty low. Um, you're only going to wind up taking 12 damage from the bumble dive there, Kinley. Ow. The, the turned over water helped kind of break the fall to some extent, um, but you did not make a clean entry into this water, so you're going to be stinging a bit. Ow. <laughs> That's more of a sting. Yeah. That's a clap and a half. <laughs> Considering it was 50 feet up. It was, it was a quarter of my hit points. <laughs> well, normal people don't jump into water 50 foot up. Yeah. She's not normal. For the smell of it. Not, not without some yeah. kind of training. You weren't supposed to follow me. It was one half of another and half of another of the other. I could either suck at doing one thing or suck at doing the other. So. Yeah. <laughs> So you were just misty stepping down under the surface of the water, every, or were you trying to misty step somewhere else? No, no, I was going right under the water. Okay, I didn't know yeah. if you were trying to get fancy. Both my um, athletics and acrobatics are terrible, so. <laughs> you, so you jump off, misty step up, do some crazy somersault flips, and then misty step in. Yeah, full <laughs> no, spell slot for one. Yeah, no, I, I only wanted to use one spell slot just no. just for the player, <laughs> just, just for the show off. Um, so you all make it into the water in various states of success. Kinley and Zar start swimming for shore. Lucy, Finnegan, and Shelly swim down. Is that the plan? You're looking for something on the bottom? Yeah, I think I'm going to do like a candy cane maneuver around the the pillar to see if there's any like cave openings or anything like that, doors. Lucy is keeping an eye out for that monster, and she has six... So if it gets dark, she does not worry. Okay. <clears throat> what about you, Finnegan? Um. <laughs> well, I'll shape shift into the reef shark again. Okay. And then my plan is once I, if I can physically <laughs> sense it, I plan on unshaping and trying to, uh, a plethora of first level spells. <laughs> I have animal friendship I have beast bond and speak with animals available so I plan on doing my best to communicate with it first okay if it's not a beast you're in for a pickle yeah or or if it's um, like immune to being charmed or or as Lucy would say a fiend huh <laughs> yeah, I don't sorry. think a fiend <laughs> drop it or or if there was some sort of like no nah, never mind i don't want to spoil that uh, oh do okay. not spoil i won't spoil don't, so don't want to spoil the muscly sea creature yeah go ahead <laughs> and make uh perception checks uh finnegan and lucy and an investigation check from shelly as you can cane your way down this well, pillar 15 is not bad do I catch a sight of it? <gasps> yeah, be my cool. perception's better. <laughs> <laughs> Only have a plus one. Uh, I'm not gonna be. I, I guess my perception's not gonna be perceptioning. It's gonna be feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I will sense the water currents. <laughs> hey, that's, that's still perception. I know. I just, I'm just saying, like, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm looking as hard as my blind eyes can see. You see nothing. <laughs> you see, you see, you actually see nothing. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> I like when you talk to yourself. <laughs> what? So you're saying something? I wasn't listening to. you. Mm -hmm. Aww. Sorry, I'm eating crunchy peanut butter out of the jar. <laughs> what? Knife or spoon? Fork. Ew. Really? I'm sophisticated. Oh, that's not it's sophisticated crunchy. at all. That's, sav that's just weird. That's horrible. That's um, savage. <laughs> I like it. All judging you. <laughs> <laughs> all ju all ju not eating the peanut butter <laughs> out of the jar, but how you're eating the peanut butter out of the jar. You're judge good. away. It makes it taste that much better. <laughs> I'm doing that. I'm going to eat my cookie. 
Hi. Okay. Cookie. Okay. Do we see so, shit? Um, I was. <laughs> I was doing a deep pull and I couldn't remember exactly um, what it was, but I still don't. I'm still not 100 percent sure. Google let me down on a quick Google clue. Um, Aww. So the um, you do not detect anything in your immediate vicinity. Shelly, you're doing this candy cane action down with detect magic. With the tech magic up <laughs> and investigating, trying to see if you spot anything, you do see that um, there's more of the iconography. There's a lot more, um, sort of, of the. There's. It's a depiction of the battle between the six and the demon army. The, and the like the the archangels and and like battle, but it's depicted almost like two tidal waves crashing into each other, more so than like armies on a battlefield. So it, it there's a lot of that water iconography sort of sewn into the depiction, uh, more so than you'd seen in other places. So you're sort of getting that two plus two vibe, um, but you're not noticing any sort of doors or side entrances or levers or switches or any of that kind of stuff as you make your way towards the bottom. To the bottom. Looking for said layer of monster that's in the water. Okay. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and do another round of perception checks. And another investigation check as you continue further down. We'll take this in kind of like oh. 50 foot increments or like 100 foot increments, something like that. Do I? Oh, do we? Do we find it? Do Do we see <laughs> things and find things? <laughs> we both did pretty well. You, <laughs> you did. Is that an 18? It is. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, um. <laughs> You find us a lever all of a sudden. Weird. <laughs> no, you don't. But, um... Not 20. You... I'm, I'm trying to think how to describe this to you. Because, um... Yeah, so you... Feel the... The movement of the water, and it's like it comes on so fast, like it's so instantaneous. There's a you feel the ripples in the water, and you're like, What's that, huh? and snap, there is a bite attempting to cl clamp down on. Oh no, not swallow, but actual bite, 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 bite. Okay, uh, oh, do I? No, 13, I don't know. I mean, the Reef Shark only has, like, what, 22 health? Yeah. Oh. AC of 12, I'm pretty sure it hits. Well, we'll <laughs> find out here in a second. Um, <laughs> oh, no, that's a grapple you. So, there's the what bite. Swal attack. What, swallow me? <laughs> yeah. It's got a, yeah. grip. It's got a uh, grip. You said it's a 12 AC? Yeah, you hit. So it, yeah. It, it, it only rolled a 13, but that is enough to hit. Um, that's actually abysmally low. <laughs> and, well, um, well, last moon, and I can do spells. Yeah. So. Uh, Finnegan's gonna get eaten. Oh no. No. I will I will definitely lose my shark grief if it does not take it, which I think it will. You pop out a shark reef, and you just see this massive creature. <laughs> so it bites you for 17 damage, Oof. and then it's going to attempt to like Grapple. hold you in its jaws. Um, Grapple. 
<laughs> so yeah, that grapple. Is a, uh, contested strength check. Mine's a plus two. But I, as just reef shark, it's a plus two. Okay. Um. So you can roll a, a strength against it to see if it, it's an, you're enough to like wiggle out. Uh, I rolled a five. Nope. Um, it rolled a 23. So oh. you are... <laughs> for, Unless I'm mad at it, there's no point. I... You never know. Uh, <laughs> it's got you firmly caught in between its teeth. Jaws clamped down on your reef shark body. Um, oh, no. And Lucy, you, like, spin around real quick as you hear the jaws clamp in the water as, as the like, everything kind of gets super turbulent and you're sort of jostled around by the wake of this creature dashing by at high speed through the water. Um, Shelly's close to the (laughs) column doing their investigation so they're not as jostled but you do witness this happening. Um, What do I see? It is a very large well, it's gargantuan. It is an absolutely no. massive beast of a sea monster. Cool. <clears throat> so it's um Is it looking at me or just holding Finnegan in its maws? It's just holding Finnegan <laughs> in its I'm I'm an animal. It's trying to eat said animal. Yeah. Um I knew exactly what was going down. But uh <laughs> what call it? In in the instant that it dashes by at high speed it looks like it's a good like 50 feet nose to tail like it's a big old big old thing what kind of goddamn thing is it well i don't know i don't know anything about monsters so no we'll go ahead (laughs) oh god i have no armor shit Rip. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> Enter. I wonder what would happen if Finnegan would revert back. Would it keep on attacking? Still would have grip on. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, If you would like to be involved in this combat, we're going to need you to roll initiative. Finnegan, you have to roll initiative. You're already in the, the thick of it. I can't really click my character, but I'll just roll initiative. Uh, I guess I have to. Initiative. Uh, six. <coughs> That's slow. So you get uh, first crack at attempting to do something back there, Finnegan. Uh, <clears throat> bonus action. I drop sh- wild shape. Okay. A- action. I cast speak with animals. Okay. <clears throat> One action, self, ten minutes. Gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts. Knowledge and awareness is limited by their intelligence, but they can... Um, 
Beast can give you information about nearby locations and monsters. Oh, is it, a, is it Beast? Including whatever they. Oh. Ooh, I gotta that's take up all of those. Oh, that's I what's happening. Him. I cast it regardless if it's Beast or not. That's yeah, it. including whatever they can perceive or have perceived within the past day, you might be able to persuade the Beast to perform a small favor for you at the DM's discretion. Okay. Um, so it is a Beast. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> It um, it's a little sort of distorted by the fact that you're underwater, but you can. Um, it's basically like yelling <laughs> "trespasser" over and over. Well, I'm not sure since I use my bonus and my action if I'm able to actually have a. a dialogue with it, so I guess I'll wait till my next turn to try speaking, to talk to it. Speaking is a free action. Yeah, with uh, with limitations on how yeah. long you can speak, but you can at least, like, say something. Um, in my small little innocent form now, no longer a reef shark. <clears throat> uh, sorry to intrude. Uh, our group of friends are looking... Uh, for an interest, we work for the the Chosen Six. Help? Question mark. Do you say question mark out loud? <laughs> well, I'm saying in a questionable tone whether it can understand it or not. I mean, yeah. not question. I got, I got you. Um, so you say that, and it's just repeating trespasser trespasser like it's you got a very kind of one track mind and um, you sort of rattle off your attempt to be persuasive you can um, yeah so that's that's what you get out of that because that was your bonus action and your action and then you kind of rattle, rattle off the communication. Shelly, you've witnessed this. The creature of substantial size has Finnegan firmly gripped in its jaws and is kind of throwing him around back and forth. And look, He's looks still like got him. More... Yeah. All right, then... Uh... I don't have much of a choice of what to do. Eldritch Blast! I, I actually can't cast Eldritch Blast, even though I chose that in my last level up, because it's attached to the book that I don't have. So... Mm, I see the problem there. But instead, what I will do is... Um, Shelly, like turns around and you see like this bubble float up that when it gets to the top of the water it pops and it just says oh fuck <laughs> and <laughs> I mean you can talk in water <laughs> yeah I know but this is funny okay, uh, that's, that's really true. and they'll like push forward this bl blast of water that takes the shape of like this glowing squid and then just blasts into the side of the thing, and it's going to be a second level yeah. guiding bolt. Okay. Oh. Okay. Seventeen. Oh. That'll hit. So that's fourteen damage. Wow, that seems low for five d six. Well, you rolled two nat sixes and two six, nat ones. Six six one one. Yeah. I would only roll four d six. Yeah. Plus one more. One, of course. Okay, so 15 radiant damage. Um, and the next attack roll made against it will be an advantage because now the whole damn beast is glittering. From my magical glowing squid. Sure. Can't miss uh, it now. Yeah. So, That's good. Lucy. You're up. Um, as I recall, you placed your armor into a bag of holding, 
which is mm -hmm. slam off. Uh, did you keep your weapon? Uh, she still has her sword. Okay. How well do you swing a sword in underwater? I guess we'll find I, out. I think it's disadvantage. Yeah. Well, is Underwater it combat since rules? the attack is supposed to be at advantage on the monster, is it? It would be normal? just a normal attack roll, yeah. Okay. It would cancel out. Uh. Like I can't cast that because that's fire. It has no fucking. I'm just trying to. I mean, I don't think there's any uh, drawbacks to using magic, fire, and stuff like that underwater, because it's magic. Well, it sets it ignite it sets it's them on up fire. To, the DM to decide whether water underwater gets stronger or lightning yeah. does more damage. It's, it's up to DM, but yeah, typically there's not a reduction of damage. Because it if might I not use... ignite. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no combustion, maybe. Oh. So, um, if you're thinking of searing smite, yeah. you would get the extra damage, but it wouldn't ignite them on fire because it explicitly says that submerging them in water extinguishes the flames. So you'd get the upfront damage on the initial hit, but you wouldn't get the on fire subsequent turn damage because they would immediately extinguish. Ooh. I have Ooh. divine smite though. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, make, I have to make sure, make sure that you uh, hit before you divine smite though. So. I hit before divine smite. Okay. You can, to yeah. Clear. Like you, you can roll, roll and make sure that you are going to hit it, and then divine smite it after that. <laughs> that way you don't waste the divine smite. All on right. A, on a miss. Like an example yeah. would be like, you stab it. And then you smite it, so you just twist the blade to do smite damage. Yeah. Alright, then she'll unsheath her long sword and go to smack it, and then divine smite it. So let's see if this shit hits. Uh, uh long sword's gonna miss. Well, I have a second attack. Let's see the second attack. 22, alright, divine that smite it. Hit. Uh, okay, where is it at? Max damage on the two-handed. Nice. Yeah. You can expel one spell slot to deal 2d8 extra da radiant damage. Alright. So, roll 2d8. Alright, so it's 8 plus 11, so 19 damage. Are you, sw are you just swinging with one hand, or are you swinging two hands? Well, it's a one-handed weapon. Well, but I guess she it's doesn't either. have any... Well, I guess she doesn't have anything in her other hand, so she take both hands try to hit it underwater. So, okay, it'd be 23 then, since okay. two-handed damage. So it is now its turn. And... Hey, boy. Yeah, it's one one um, <coughs> make a bite attack against you. Attack hits. You are swallowed. What is the what What is the attack roll? I'm currently at 13 AC, but I have a reaction. I can do ice shield to make it 18. So let's see. The attack roll. It's a 24. Well, I still oh. casted it because I told you I did it, regardless. So With your reaction. So it's it it swallowed. kind of, you you feel it loosening its grip on you as though ready to clamp down again, and you throw ice shield in the water, hoping it's gonna stop it, and it just clamps right through the ice shield, and you have been swallowed. Oh, sheesh. Fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm not dead yet. I ain't dead yet. <laughs> Just shapeshift into something so, bigger so you burst through its belly or throat you are or whatever. 
blinded, restrained. You have total. You have total cover against attacks. So that's that's something. You can't hit um, me now. <laughs> and technically, it can swallow up to three targets at a time. Holy crap! Um, <laughs> Shit. Well, better get started. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you're gargantuan. You can swallow as many as you want, basically. Half, half the party. Um, How much HP does it have? Shit. A whole bunch. You'll you'll know uh, when it goes down, or we all go down. Yeah. So with that, um, that's its turn. You, um, Finnegan, you are inside of it, so it's like, kind like of this. muffled. Um, you're blinded and restrained, but you can still hear it yelling, essentially, or like the beast, the underwater beast equivalent of yelling, trespasser, and you also catch a mumbled, but it, it's mumbled now because you're inside of it, um, a trespasser and non-believer. Shun the non-believers! Uh, that, was, that was not on purpose! <laughs> But yes, because I didn't make it. Didn't I didn't make the offering? That's fine. Um. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's fine. It is your turn, so you can attempt to. Um, I cast. I cast animal friendship. It has to make a wisdom fifteen. Okay. Wisdom fifteen. <laughs> What does animal friendship do? Uh, it says this spell lets you convince a beast that you mean it no harm. Choose a beast that you can see within range. Technically see. It must, it must see and hear you. Oh, shoot. Second part doesn't work. Then. And well, if bullshit. the beast's intelligence is four or higher, the spell fails. So it would have been unsuccessful. Um, but if that's not gonna work, it has to see me. Yeah. It has. It can't feel me. No, it's. It must see and hear you. You, you have to like <sighs> communicate friendship, the power of friendship. <laughs> I hug it. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's actually fight. that's that's not a terrible suggestion, there, Shelly. It's, it's hugging you right now. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm gonna let my entire party know with my telepathic ability. Hey, um, it swallowed me if you didn't see, um, and it's, it's calling me a non-believer and it's saying we're invading on its space. So, I don't, I don't think it wants us here. Hey, does Zarin, can they hear that too, that mean? No, uh, it's, it's only like no, 30 okay. feet of 30 range, feet. So. Yeah. so literally the two, you the two of you can get it, but the rest of them are off and gone. And I'm just screaming in panic, it says I'm a non-believer, it's gonna eat me! <laughs> I mean, you are. Oh, I have no clue if I'm going uh, to get down this thing. Fuck. That's not going to work. Then. Help. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Should have believed harder. Or at all. <laughs> or at all. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I got a plan. That's what yeah, happens if you don't do things with the party. That's, <laughs> that's what, what made it so fun was that... Um, Zar like immediately went and did it, and I was like, okay. Zar put the lantern on the water. Zar's in the clear. He can swim in the lake all he wants. Everyone else went and did it the next morning. I was like, everyone's fine. And then Finnegan's like, nah, I'm good. I'm like, okay. You've already been in the lake a couple of times. It's caught whiff of you. It knows you, you're like there. It's been stalking you every time you've set foot in this lake already. All so. right, I am going to. Oh. I'm gonna hold. Uh -huh. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually not cast it, but I'm gonna charge that thing. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm charging my snowball. Okay. You are You're charging gonna... snowball. Yep. Uh, I need to reread the snowball real quick because I haven't learned all the spells inside and out yet. Um. Where is it? There it is. Uh. Ice and snow in your hand, launches at your foes, bonus action, dexterity saving throw, cold damage. I'm so glad I highlighted that stuff. Um, 
<laughs> Giddy. Action of Wait, turns increases if, power. if he's restrained, can he <coughs> actually hold something in his hand like that and create it with the spell? Uh, yes. I would, okay. I would say that he can. Um. Oh, shit. My leg's gonna get a little cold. <laughs> but you know what? I've been through a lot of cold training. I think I can handle it. <laughs> oh, and don't worry. I understand what happens when this goes off. I was gonna say, like, you do... Oh, yeah. De yep. <clears throat> oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, go it's gonna detonate in there in a 25-foot radius around it's... where it... It's okay. I have lay on hands. I can Trust bring me. you back. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna happen? I don't. At this point, I have no idea what the hell's gonna happen. I mean, lay on hands doesn't bring people back to life. That's yeah. exactly true. Um, this is okay. Uh, so that's that's what you're doing, um, <coughs> Shelly. You are up. You've gotten the telepathic <coughs> message from Finnegan that the beast is yelling <coughs> the words "trespasser" and "non-believer." Uh, yeah, so and that it has eaten him, and you're like, yeah, I kind of caught that part, but yeah, and the non-believer part definitely gave Shelly an idea. So they're gonna swim up towards the head, mm -hmm. uh, tattoos glowing, mm -hmm. with minor illusion making it look like they've got wings, like celestial wings, mm -hmm. and be like, drop it. <laughs> well, he's already swallowed. <laughs> Spit him out. And it Badly a plurid on. They're, <laughs> they're going to say it in Aquan. <laughs> and in common. So hopefully <laughs> that and it understands celestial. one or the other. Can read Ancient Celestial, can't speak Ancient Celestial. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I can speak Celestial, though. <laughs> so, let's take a look. Let's see. Um, it only knows Dwarfish. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's, let's see. Uh, go ahead and make an Arcana check at advantage and an animal handling check. <laughs> okay. A 21 and a 17. That's not bad. Okay. I'm impressed. So, I didn't fail horribly. Uh, listen. Shelly's affinity for animals knows no bounds, knows okay? no bounds. No bounds. And I love to support you in your efforts to <laughs> literally everything on this goddamn island. You want to be friends? Want to be friends? But Hugs. first, Lucy gets a turd. Oh, shit. She's gonna see what Shelly's doing and probably swim towards Shelly, but still with her sword in hand. We're like, uh, I'm not sure what. Oh, wait, how would she react? I'm gonna bust like, out your own wings. <laughs> wait, I don't. I can, I can play this game. I can play this game. She that'd has, be, she cool. has feathers on her shoulders, so I'm not sure if that'll work enough. But that's about all she could pop because she, she doesn't have like, wings boop, yet. Boop. <laughs> I do not get my wings at level five. You can Tweety Bird it. I'm here, guys. Oh, I got it. my wings. <laughs> When, oh, when do you get them? It's not too far off, isn't it? I think no. seven. I don't know. I, I don't know where I get my wings, but I know I'm getting them soon. Maybe level six or seven? I don't know. We'll, we'll double check it. You, you don't currently have them yet, so. I do not have... I. The only thing I have is glowing eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stub, stubby, stubby wings. It's just feathers on our shoulder blades, dude. So what, um, so that's what you're gonna do? You're just gonna kind of swim up next to Shelly? Maybe like, and... probably yell at it to let go of Finnegan and Celestial. Hopefully it hears, it, it can comprehend Celestial. I just wanna make this right. You both are yelling at a giant colossal monster that can swallow it... three things at a time. Mm, yeah. Okay, just want to clarify, we're all in the same boat here. Of, of, but no, we're, we're not non-believer. Yeah, non-believer. 
Well, so they're one, trying. Technically, somebody. one technically one's not a non-believer. <laughs> I look kind of like an angel. Maybe that'll work. It, and she did the <laughs> thing too. She I have feathers on my thing. shoulder. I did the candle on the the lake. <clears throat> uh, you got me curious now. I'm looking for the. Um, Are she you looks like voice. an angel a little bit. Plus, she, what, yeah, I read that on the fucking ASMR, and apparently they can have little feathers on their shoulder blade, on their shoulder blades. Yeah, right, no, but that's are definitely... you a protector ASMR? Because you should get your wings at third. All ASMRs get their wings at third level. Yeah. Well, no, uh... I'm the if variant. You get, it's, did the variant. Oh, uh, you did the you variant? Don't, you don't oh, get then the you don't full get wings. I'll, I'll, I'll you don't get wings at all, select, then. Yeah. I, I could only select variant. Oh. It wouldn't let me select the other one. That's weird. It should've... That's weird. Anyway. It, should, it should have been available. Yeah, it should have all been. But that's... It um, was not. We'll sort, sort that out at a later time yeah. and date. Uh, we can... yeah. but, so that's what you're going to do. You can... Um, uh, yeah, you want to like hold an action. And, like If it doesn't spit out Finnegan, do you want to smack it with your sword or any of that kind of stuff? or? Uh, yeah, probably hold her action. So it is now the creature's turn. Oh boy. It is at the top of its turn. And again, you take acid damage from its digestive fluid. That's fun. Uh, oh. It's fine. We're 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 gonna go we're gonna go down this tube of of, of hurting each other real quick. Just keep this shit up. Fish. You take 15 oh. damage. Ah, fuck. At the start of its turn. <laughs> and then it... We're going to find out... Does it comprehend either of these languages? We just yell at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to spit you out. Who did it? <laughs> uh, Shelly's... <laughs> the... <laughs> Convincingness of the minor illusion combined with the animal handling command was enough oomph to uh, convince it to spit you out. And it does. Um, it looks a little disappointed that it's not going to get to eat you. <laughs> but it sort of spits you out and kind of turns to go and swim away. Oh. I will s I, I, I will I will slow I will slowly swim upwards maintaining eye contact with it until it loses sight with it. I call while, out to the thank you. While, while holding that snowball just in case. Mm -hmm. And then before it, go, it reaches its max dice I'll dispel it. Just like... Thanks. So it swims off and you can see it kind of disappear into the distance and it looks like it slips into some sort of cave on along the, the edge of the the lake bed. A cave, you say? Mm hmm You assume it's like where it where it hides out from people when it doesn't need to be teaching them Get lessons. Killing people? Yeah. So I'm gonna tell Finn again, you should probably go light a lantern. And take a bath. And also, here's jellyfish. Okay. Well, uh, I noticed that he's very persistent on me on me invading his, his his space. So I mean, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave for now. Yeah. You guys, you got you guys are good for until the end of the night with the whole like breathing thing. <laughs> Looks like you guys aren't invading apparently. So. Whatever that for whatever reason that is, uh, you guys have fun. I'm not sure why it saw you as a trespasser. Well, I mean, I was a fish. Maybe it didn't like having other fishes in the water. I don't know, but no, I'm not gonna stick around to find out. Yeah, that's a good swimming. idea. Maybe you should away. go join Kenley and Zai. They're doing stuff with 
books and things. That's no, they're, inter game. they're interrogating people. You get nine hit points back, by the way. But uh, <laughs> Shelly's gonna be like, maybe, maybe we should go to uh, <clears throat> just in case. But we should probably make sure that uh, he lights a lantern before he gets back in the water. And as we start swimming away, the wings stay in place. <laughs> Maybe you want to dispel that. <laughs> nah, it's nah. fine. It'll only be there for six seconds anyway. You uh, lost your wings. Are you okay? <laughs> what so how I much intelligence did that thing have? I wonder. I'm gonna not, as we're swimming character. up as we're swimming up like what what does the lantern got to do with anything? I mean we've been we've literally been blessed by the six. It don't know though. It's part of a ritual. It probably marks us as friendlies in some way. So you weren't there to do it, so you didn't pass the test. I mean, it didn't try to eat us. Yeah, it didn't. Even when I smacked it and spit it. I hit it with a big old squid. I saw that. That was kind of awesome. It was cool, right? It's quite I cramped like... in there. I will, I, I will give you that. For how big it is, really small throat. <clears throat> mm. So as all of that insanity <laughs> unfolds, Zar and Kinley have <laughs> gone off on their own adventure. Yes. Ho hopefully involving less swallowing. <laughs> well, I mean, more did yeah, like no. that. Oh my! Oh, God. <laughs> different strokes for different folks. What did you do? Oh God! Didn't know we were running that kind of campaign. Hey. <laughs> Not that was Saturday night. That was that was that Saturday night game. How, whoa, whoa, how'd that get here? <laughs> we just happened to be lucky enough that the city hall is located in a bordello. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's gonna burn oh, down. No. It's gonna burn down. No. All right. So yes, Kinley and I would be off to the city hall. Okay. Yes. So you um, head off. You have to stop and ask for directions, and they point you in the general direction. You eventually find your way to City Hall. Stroll in. There's like a check-in desk secretary kind of deal. It's a little bit different from the Druid Kingdom, where they just kind of had that big meeting space. This is a little more of a Victoria-style formal City Hall. All right. Um, so, so you kind of check into the front desk, and they, how can we help you? What are you here for? Well, but before going in, I'm going to take my badge out from under my cloak and put it on the outside of my cloak Okay. as I walk through the door. And I'm just going to walk up yeah. to the reception area and be like... <clears throat> I'll have mine on as well. Sure. Um, so the secretary looks up and is, just gives you a, uh, what can we do for you today, keepers? We will meet with the city council now. Thank you. God damn. <laughs> and Kinley and I would have discussed on the way over here that Zar's gonna come up in this place just like he did at the Druid Druidic Alliance because that's how they know him and um yeah, he, he he's not gonna show any kind of like difference in attitude. And she's not gonna screw it up unless she has to say something. <laughs> <laughs> um so the secretary is just, um, well, I would be happy to arrange something for you. I don't believe the entire council is here currently. Uh, the council leader is, of course, in his office. But um, aside from that, the general members at large are out and about, I believe. Um, it is roughly lunchtime. They should be back sometime this afternoon. Then take us to the leader of the council immediately. Thank you. Sure, sure. And uh, she kind of snaps for a page type, and they lead you to the council leader's chambers. 
It's okay. uh, a nice office, very kind of. It looks um, a lot like a judge's chambers, like when mm-hmm. you when you watch episodes of like Law and Order and stuff like that. How a judge's office tends to look. It's got that kind of a vibe to it. It has a very um, judicial feel. Okay. And I, I, I'm guessing I would recognize this person from the little hollow things from the Druidic Alliance. Um. Yeah, I. It's, it hasn't been that long of a period of time, so I would say you'd yeah. probably still pretty readily recognize <clears throat> him as the person who was in the little hollow sphere. I wonder if he remembers me. (laughs) (laughs) He does. Good afternoon, Councilman. Not particularly fondly, but... (laughs) Good afternoon, Councilman. (sighs) And are you here to earthquake my kingdom as well? I'm going to tilt my head. Are you assuming that the official representatives of the Empire and the Keepers on this island caused an earthquake. Well, from what I've been hearing, trouble follows you wherever you go. So, for now, it's, yes. It's not, it's not that it follows us. It's that we root it out. When there is a rotten core, you must go at it to save the rest. Now that said, we require unfeathered and complete private access to your city archives with no questions asked. You will also fetch us a scroll of sending and a scroll of non detection. Ah. <laughs> Damn, bruh. It is a, a man, a man of singular focus. I gotta give you that. And, yes. and should this occur relatively hastily we should have no further bother with you and we'll be on our way as soon as our business is completed as I understand it you entered the druid kingdom under similar pretense and left with it under keeper rule having issue decrees of your own and a wake oh, of destruction behind and, you. I... And what decrees would this be? Because I told them not to tell anyone the stuff that we uh, told them to do, so this piques his interest about who's going to get their like shoulders broken when he gets back. <laughs> Damn! Well news travels as do people merchants vendors things of that sort we have bards who make the rounds and they noticed a shift in faith amongst the druids not just their attunement to nature but uh who stands behind their nature indeed and are you a treacherous cultist Hell bent on destroying this kingdom? No, I'm hell bent on stopping you from destroying this kingdom. Well, then we don't have a problem here. However, Badolphus was the rot that needed to be cut out. And he was. Unfortunately, due to the delaying tactics of that council and Bardolphus, we were unable to save the catastrophe that befell that city. I would extremely suggest that you just give us what we need, and we will stay out of your hair, you will stay out of our hair, or keep a Bella Foy here, we'll contact her grandmaster grandfather, and he can pass along to make sure that your assistance is given the The decision is up to you the grandmasters that are currently stuck outside of and he just gestures at the dome over his head do you really think that's going to be up forever at the rate you seem to be going (sighs) 
All right. I want to measure this guy up. Because he's pissing me off. <laughs> you didn't exactly make a very strong first impression. Well, or, no. or ra rather you did and just not the one you were hoping. Um, so yeah, he basically is like, I'm not going to get steamrolled like those stupid druids. They can shove this keeper nonsense up their ass. I'm going to stand my ground and protect my kingdom. Very well, then. Your dissension will be logged with the Keepers and Imperial Command. I'm sure you'll be hearing from them shortly. I have a feeling they'll understand my point of view. Hmm. We'll see. And I will leave. You gonna follow Kinley? You gonna stay behind? You gonna interject? Uh, let let this roll. Uh, and unless he gives me some sign to do something, like I said, she's not socially apt, really. So, I I would just say Zar has that look on his face, like he did when he dragged that person's body across the city to dump it into the teep. Mm -hmm. At the moment. Kinley, so it's up to you whether or not you decide to uh, try and mitigate whatever it is that <laughs> Zor's thinking about doing oh, next. Oh, God. <sighs> What's this person's name again? Um, his name is... I haven't been looking at my... Rip. Van Winkle. Sure, that sounds good. <laughs> Councilman <laughs> Rip. <laughs> yes, Frederick. <gasps> Frederick. But this Cap one goes by Rick. <laughs> yes, I love your naming sense. <laughs> Fuck yes. Perfect. They're actually that look exactly the same as the other two guys named Frederick. <laughs> so Everyone's a clone. Oh God. Oh God. Not only do we clone inns, we clone council leaders. <laughs> <laughs> one's an ink salesman and the other one's a tattoo artist. So. Oh, the Alliance Corporation goes deeper than any of us thought. <laughs> it's the true conspiracy. <laughs> it's the true conspiracy. <laughs> that, that the uh, true, true BBEG of the entire campaign is the yeah. Eli Elias Corp's secret manipulations of everything. Yep. Uh, of course. No, so his, his name is Penlador. Is a like highfalutin elf type. Penlador. Yeah. <sighs> Councilman Penlador. You can always tell, always tell when I make up a name and when <laughs> a name generator makes up a name because there are two very distinct categories. <laughs> <sighs> we we are not trying to step on any toes. We are trying to perform our duties here. And to do our duties, we need as much information as possible. And the things that went down in the Druid Kingdom, most of them unfortunate due to betrayals of their own people at the highest level. which led to a great catastrophe, which we wish to avoid here and other places. But if you don't wish to assist us, then do not come running to us when this tragedy hits here. We will do what we can without information that we need, but the more we have to fight our battles, the better it is for us and you. I do what I can in my power to try and save the people. As do I. Make make no mistake, this is not about toes being stepped on. This is not 
the ego of a council leader run amok. This is concern for my my city and my people. I admittedly the information is second hand, but as second hand as it may be, I currently lack faith in your efficacy as keepers, as young as you are. We may be young, but, but we had... <laughs> David, disconnect. <laughs> yep, David crashed. Don't. Oops. Oh, no. Dorky. Oh, crap, it's internet shit itself. Oh, oh no. no. Rip. Oh, no. Ah. So now everyone is all... Off centered. Now we're all crooked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll continue with this. Hopefully, he gets back soon. Okay. Or uh, or hops it on his phone or something. Yeah. Where was I? Um, I had said it wasn't about stepping on toes. It's yeah. not about ego. It's yeah, yeah, saving yeah, people. We, we are here to do what we can. We are. We may be young. We may be mostly inexperienced. I've trained for quite some time under my parents and my grandfather. And all I wish to do is my best as a keeper. And as a citizen and if that involves taking measures to protect in the only way we have available to us we did what we could for the druid kingdom to try and stabilize it as much as possible but we are short on resources short on allies and short on time. So all we ask is for your help. We don't wish to take over. We don't wish to remove you from power. We don't wish to, as I said before, step on your toes and or crush your authority. We would rather work with you as I hope you would work with us. Unfortunately, that situation did not pan out because of the treachery that we faced in the Druid Kingdom. So, I leave it to you to decide what to do. If you must think about it, so be it. We will be in town. I will be staying at the Elias. Make a persuasion roll. That's going to blow, but unless I get advantage or something. No, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm on my phone because my internet died, so sorry. Yeah. Um, so you kind of do, do your best to sort of sway his general sense of you. And <laughs> you, have to, you have to understand my perspective on this i've already had my arm twisted to give refuge to a murderer for their keeper privileges and now you and your lot stroll into my city asking for accommodations and your reputation precedes you and not the best of light i there's a there's only so much that the a kingdom especially a kingdom even if temporarily cut off from the empire is willing to put up with under these circumstances and i'm just about at my wit's end with these yeah. beginner keepers and their assorted shenanigans you say a murderer that you who do you speak of oh 
are you have you not had the pleasure of meeting your fellow keeper yet in town? We were not aware that were we were were we aware that wasn't in town? Yeah, we were. We, we, we knew that um, Trinity is in the kingdom, but not that she was explicitly in this town. We were unaware of any keeper in Vinewood. Yes, uh, Trinity or Ma, another legacy like yourself. She was banished from Soga for assassinating a rival student in their sleep. <sighs> well, I can say I have not had the displeasure of meeting this Trinity as of yet. Yes, well, I'm sure the opportunity will present if you continue to stick around. Her mother was most insistent I permit her to stay in, within my kingdom. And as a field keeper, I felt the need to oblige her request. Request. Uh, but I am not particularly thrilled. Soga is within my borders. We allow them to operate somewhat autonomously with the headmistress running the show, but still to have her banished from there yet reside here is uh, straining relationships. And now what you've gotten up to followed you here. And I, it's just more on my plate than I need. What we've gotten up to is a problem for the entire island. It is not something we brought with us. It's something that's already here, and we're trying to stop it from becoming worse than it already is. And I am ashamed to hear this the deeds of this fellow keeper. It is, at least for me, not how I believe a keeper should act. We have tried to act in good faith in all we've done, being young and new, the majority of my group. We will make mistakes. We, we will stumble. We will fall. But all we can do is try and try as best as we know how. So if you're willing to help us, I will leave it in your hands. But for now, I will, I will see myself out. And and if I run across this other keeper, I will be sure to have words with her as well. Bear, bear this in mind, keeper, fellow Fiore. When I make a mistake, I lose my council seat. When you make a mistake, people lose their lives. And I just let you leave on that note. She will nod. Mm -hmm. Make her exit. So that's how that went. Yeah. Well, well. You know, she, she, was <laughs> she was she was she was probably completely nervous and shaking that entire conversation. That's why she only got a thirteen under persuasion because she has zero social skills. So. <laughs> to be fair, their interaction did not go as good as ours. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> At least, at least Shelly got some pictures underwater. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Woo! Winning. So, so who is this Trinity related to? Trinity is, is Orma? Bella's daughter. Bella Orma is the field keeper who has the uh, blacksmith shop. Ah, uh, okay. And this Trinity is the one we're supposed to not want to hang around with. We want to talk to the mother. Yeah. This one's the crazy one that you yeah. don't want to associate yeah. yourself with. She's a murderous person, apparently, so, you know. Yeah, she's... Definitely do not want to meet her. <laughs> she's the type who um, has very much embraced the impunity of a keeper's will kind of a thing. She took it as a slight that there was a student better than her, and 
was just like, well, I know how to deal with that, and strangled her to death in her sleep, <laughs> and was like, I'm a keeper, what do you expect? Boom. And they were like, uh, no, you're gonna leave. <laughs> Maybe Jesus. she's just misunderstood. Yeah, I yep, don't think that's... so. We should, send her, we should send her back to me, Callian. <laughs> Okay. Like Helen. Okay, Shelly, go ahead and make an animal handling check for persuading Trinity to give up her murderous intent. Uh, sure. Why not? Disadvantage. A disadvantage. No, she just yeah. she just tell her there's someone much stronger than her back there. She should really go meet him. <laughs> and then of course, you roll that really high. Uh, so, um. Unless anyone has anything especially pressing that they want to do right this moment, I think we'll call that a night here, considering yeah. we've quasi lost Sar, and um, you guys got to do your underwater bit, you guys got to do your first interaction with the council for the Valley of Inspiration, at, at least the council leader, and um, so we'll call it a night here. Thanks, everybody. Thank you to my players. We'll see everyone back here next week same bat time same bat channel um so yeah have a good yep. night till next week folks we will Bye see you guys. uh stay tuned I have a our ravnica campaign tomorrow night maybe uh saturday uh unlawful disorder in the morning and chaos shall reign again at night uh sunday we wait friday does isn't... oh yeah friday, 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 friday starts this week also the new uh uh, Friday Nithia. campaign start Nithia. Uh, stay tuned for that. It's going to be an interesting group of players, and uh, it definitely sounds like it's going to be an interesting world. Yeah, that should be cool. Um, and of course, yeah. Saturday then, and then Sunday, of course, we go back to our amazing time travel adventures on Cutting Limited. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Fuck it up. It's fucking weird. Uh, go back to licking your window, bear. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it. What the fuck? I'm Emerson. Uh, Wait, does that does that mean she has a compulsion to say, "Ah, oh, Mamelin"? <laughs> no. Okay, sure. All right, so that'd be weird and out of character. Take care, everybody. People. Remember, hit those sub buttons if you're not already. We are trying to hit that hundred sub goal so we can give it away an amazing prize valued at a hundred dollars, people. So, you know, let's get those subs in. Spread the word. We love you. It's pretty. We will see you all next time. Bye-bye.